Hello, Brian Kelly here, head coach of LSU football, and I'm here to tell you if you like sports, go check out Belly Up Sports at bellyupsports.com. I spent many hours reading their articles and listening to their podcast while I was in South Bend eating some fine Louisiana cooking and also picking up this here accent at their local Popeye's Chicken before I took the head coaching job at LSU. Belly Up Sports has sports articles and podcasts covering a wide variety of sports from baseball to heck, even college football. So go check out bellyupsports.com. You won't be disappointed. Go Tigers. Hey, everybody. Uh, Justin here. Vinny's here. Greg's here. Brian Kelly, our ad read for today. Uh, wow, was he incredible. adapted to his new digs over there? Holy Man, <laughs> his, his southern accent is better than the one I can do. And he's been there like, what, a week, if that's so good for a couple him. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, can we just say I, I can't stand Brian Kelly. And I, I used to like the Irish for the most part. And then once he got hired, I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm kind of excited to be watching the Irish again and cheering for them now because he's gone. I just, yeah. He just seems like such an ass. And yeah, oh I mean, yeah, totally. Granted, I, I know he got results. Cincinnati too. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And I know he got results, and I know people will yep. say, hey, you know, the ends justify the means. But man, I just I would not want to play for a guy like that. And and then yeah. you you factor in that whole thing that happened to that kid. I still don't kid know the whole died. story. The kid that died in the that cherry made picker. Him go up on a uh, to record. The, the, yeah, to record on a really windy day. And, yeah. And can I can I comment on that really quick? Yeah. Anytime yeah. I have to do. Uh, any kind of aerial lift training for my miserable uh, day job. That is the first thing you that think is of? brought up. No, that 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 is brought up in the training. Is the oh, really? oh, really? Yeah, just for reference. So, yeah, wow. that's so, you know, good, good riddance to, to Brian Kelly. I, I really hope uh, Alabama and, and everyone else down south just crushes him every time they play yeah. them. But <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, uh, hey, everybody, this is baseball, whatever, whatever. Episode 35. Uh, today, we're going to talk about baseball. We got some cool Cubs stuff, some sock stuff. Mini Minoso is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're going to go over some some previous signings. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into them. Got a little bit of Bears talk, a little bit of Blackhawks talk. If you're a hockey or, bear, or a football fan, and then our whatever topic, we are going to do movies we missed out on. So it could just be movies you weren't interested in, so you never saw them. It could be movies that you just somehow never got around to seeing. It could just be movies you didn't see and you don't understand why people are so hyped about them and you just chose not to see it. So we'll be talking about that in our second segment. But uh, before we begin. Let me tell you how to contact this wonderful show the three of us put together. First of all, you can text us or leave us a voicemail at 1-913-808-3278. That number again is 1-913-808-FART. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Dynamite drop in, Greg. That uh, broadcasting school is really paying off. Um, <laughs> we are then going to tell you we can be emailed at baseball and whatever at gmail.com or the official Belly Up Sports email is uh, baseball and whatever podcast at bellyupsports.com you can reach us on facebook at facebook.com slash baseball and whatever or tweet us at baseball and what uh i think i got everything you can also watch the video version of this wonderful podcast and see our amazing faces um and that is at go to youtube search baseball and whatever and you'll find all of our videos we got a bunch of other stuff other content we do that is more video related as well on there including Greg's blast from past uh vlog series and then if you want like i think also, that's i think that's Vinny's now. A black. Oh, I'm Vin, sorry. I, I didn't Vin, mean to say black. Vinny, Vinny's keeping black. I meant to say. I meant to say. What's uh, well, I'm doing it during the football sorry. season, Greg? You can take it back during baseball. <laughs> that's right. I meant <laughs> if to say there is one. Uh, I'll yes, think of right? something new. <laughs> you can see Greg's consider them slime vlog. Sorry. Uh, if if you are subscribed to our podcast, though, you can also check out the mini pod we do, which is a blast from the past. Vinny and Greg have been doing. Vinny's been nailing it with Bears games from the past. Uh, more simpler time when they were better because they're an absolute joke right now and continue to be. Well, but uh, yeah, I picked a real doozy this week. It's not good. <laughs> oh, well, I was like, to be fair, I believe they were jokes then, too. So, yeah, yeah. But at least it was funny then. It's just miserable now. So, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's the plan. Uh, before we begin, I got to say shout out to my sister. She 
for whatever reason, it must be because I'm such a great brother. She ordered me a Yeti mug. I don't know if you, this probably doesn't play on audio with our baseball and whatever logo on what? it. What? I know. You, she. Yeah. You know what, Justin? I bet you the people listening can see that through Spotify. Really? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> on YouTube. Sorry. Did I say Spotify? No, I, I I was you said this is probably doesn't make good for listening the listening yeah. portion and so I was just being smart. <clears throat> ah gotcha <laughs> yeah <sighs> um yeah so if you're on the video version so yeah thank you Meg for uh for for putting that together for that me. looks know, really nice yeah and I know I yeah, also it does. Have, we, I also have a coffee mug of our old logo from uh, Vinny your mom and dad were nice enough to yep. give me that too so um also you can still order merchandise from baseball and whatever we have t shirts hoodies. Long sleeve tees, baseball tees. Greg's modeling one right now. He looks so dapper in that T-shirt. Uh, Vinny also put together a um, a coffee mug on there as well with our new logo. So go to bonfire.com slash baseball and whatever, I believe is the, I believe that's what it was. Um, I yes. will double check. Uh, otherwise, I can put that in the show notes. <clears throat> but before we begin, um, first of all, Famous 35s, I have one. Uh, Blackhawks legend, Hall of Famer, and yep. recently passed away, Tony Esposito. The um, only one that's, that that's it's, the only one. Yeah, is it really? I believe so. Yeah, yep. he's the only yes, one. They reti- reti- yeah, 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 they retired. They retired his number. Yeah, it. yeah. Did I ever tell you guys that my dad met him at an airport at O'Hare? Oh, airport? really? Yeah. No, but oh, I saw wow. that on Twitter. So he met <laughs> he met Tony O. Uh, this would have been maybe two or three years ago, right before the pandemic. He was flying down to Florida. Him and my mom were going down to to go down to their uh, their house down there, and he sees Tony Esposito just sitting there, and he's got like a. Um, like a, a fur coat on he's dressed to the nines. And my dad goes to my mom, is that, is that Tony Esposito from the Hawks? And my mom's like, Oh my God. Yeah. She's like, you got to talk to him. You, you know, just will be so happy. You got to You got to talk to him. I'll take a picture. So she's taking a picture of him from her seat, like very non-discreetly. It looks like she's on her phone, but my dad goes up to him and goes, uh, you, you Tony and Tony Esposito goes, yeah. Who's asking? And he goes, Oh, you know, my name's Scott. I just want to say, uh, Appreciate all you've done, you know, big fan. <laughs> and he goes, Oh, you going to Florida too? And so they talked about restaurants in Florida in Tampa that they both they both enjoy. <laughs> nice. Didn't talk about hockey, didn't talk about anything. Oh, Those look at like, that. So I yeah. think that's why he was talking to my dad so much, is because my dad didn't care about the Blackhawk stuff. He's like, let's yeah. talk about restaurants because he Tony Esposito was going down there too. I guess he lives in Tampa or he lived in Tampa. So it turned out they were on the same flight. Uh, Tony Esposito sat like six or seven rows behind him. And I guess there was one lady that was complaining and yelling and being a pain in the ass on the flight. So at the end of the flight, Tony Esposito gets up and goes, ah, oh, you had to sit next to a winner, didn't you? Just like that. And then, and then that was it. And he's like, I, I know T- Tony Esposito knows who I am. I'm like, well, let's, let's not go crazy. I don't know if yeah. you are, but, uh, <laughs> I love that story. He seemed like a really cool guy. So that's, that's awesome. the only, that's the only 35 I have. I don't know about that's you guys. That's so cool. Um, I got a couple. For the uh, oh, you first, yeah. For the White Sox, the obvious one, yep. The big hurt, yep. uh, yeah. before, before Frank Thomas, I have no idea. There was nobody, don't worry. I like okay, nobody's. <laughs> um, I know you have a Cubs list, Vinny. Uh, short. I short, I have two. Can I name okay. those? Do you have any? Do you have any Cubs, Justin? I have none. No, I am I not have, good at this. I have two in more recent times, Cole Hamels. Oh, yeah. 35. That was his career number. And before that, the only guy, other guy I can think of was Randall Simon. Yes. Oh, God. Randall Simon, (laughs) one of my favorites. Those were two notable. Those those are the only ones. Yeah. The current one would be Justin Steele. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. So, right. makes sense. But other than that, there was a bunch of nobodies too. Well, I think not a popular number on the. Right, I Chicago. think um, bullpen coach, longtime bullpen coach Lester Strode was a thirty-five. Uh, he, okay. I think he that might check out. Yeah, number. So I think that's why it was is kind of sporadic, I guess. But before him, before Randall Simon, around that time, I have no idea. So <laughs> nice. Uh, you guys got a uh, Bears thirty-fives? I have one. I got okay. nothing. A train and there we go. Thomas. Anthony yeah, Thomas. Okay. Running back. Yeah, oh, that's oh, the only one oh, I have. A lot of running backs. I have Ryan Null, good uh practice squad uh <laughs> preseason standout. Raheem Mostert. Do you guys remember he was at yeah. the Bears? I no. totally yeah. forgot about that. Um Jack oh Rogers. He was. I remember okay. I remember him, yeah. Yep. Neil Anderson. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then for the the old farts listening, Rick Casser. Caceres, okay. C-A-S-A-R-E-S. Uh, he was a fullback from 1955 to 1964, won a couple okay. football uh, championships with the Bears. So 
Yep. And then, yep, Justin named the only Blackhawk to wear number 35. And then for Bulls, it was very sparse. Do you guys have any Bulls? I don't have any I have Bulls. none, no. During the, was it 90, between 96 and 98, I think, Jason Caffey was 35. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. 35s weren't, uh, I mean, a couple Hall of Famers, but other than that, it's kind of sparse yeah. in Chicago yeah. sports history. So, yep. Huh, there nice. we go. 35. All right, so we've made it to episode 35. Uh, we do not have anything in the text line or voicemail-wise this week, but we do have a nope. few YouTube comments, uh, Facebook <clears throat> comments, and some Twitter messages as well. Greg, would you like to read those? I sure would. All right. Our buddy on YouTube, Glucosamine Chondroidin, chimes in. In response to our PS1 talk, Gran Turismo 6 was better than 5, but 5 and 6 were weird because it looks like they ported GT4 car models for 800 cars and the other 200 they built from the ground up for PS3, okay? The 800 cars from GT4 didn't have legit cockpit view, just flat silhouette of the dash and windshield, while the other 200 had fully detailed interiors and exteriors also looked more detailed and higher resolution. I do I do remember that because when that came out, I think for PS4... Uh, if I'm if I'm remembering the or no PS3 the Grand well Turismo. GT yeah GT5 was the first one on PS3, PS3 and right? then GT6 yeah. was PS3 as well right it was also PS3 okay. yeah so yeah I remember when I think it was GT6 came out they made such a big deal about having these premium version cars and I was like oh you'll have the real interior dash and everything and then the, like he said the rest of the cars were just what they you know a basic dash nothing fancy you know oh, just kind okay. of a silhouette and that was and it was like oh it, we did 200 cars this way but well there's 800 cars in the game you might you know could be a problem there but uh yeah, yeah i totally remember that file, maybe mm-hmm. so he glucosamine sounds like a uh a fan of the big, uh, grand big, turismo big video game yeah. Guy, yeah. games here yeah All right. new one comes out in it? march i'm excited seven right yeah yeah holy moly here we go mm-hmm. uh he can t- another comment he chimes in In response to movies that impacted us, I know I'm late, but my impact movies are 40-year-old virgin. Seth Rogen and Paul Rudd became a couple of my favorite comedians after that. Uh, Mean Girls, such an awesome movie. (laughs) Yep, Mallrats rented this and Clerks when I was a teen. And Apocalypse Now, watch it at a time in my life where I started liking movies that weren't just straight comedies. Nice. What a shout right there. Apocalypse Now. That's a yep. that's a very powerful movie. So I like the Seinfeld version better. <laughs> hey, it was it, to me that was really well done. That was a good uh that was a good homage yes. to Apocalypse Now. That was really well done. So Myanmar. Yes. <laughs> Where you have a coat from, Vinny. Yeah, right. right? That's no, right. I didn't buy, that's the, right. I didn't buy the coat I you saw didn't buy at the it, store. Yeah. No, ah. no supporting the new Peterman line. So yeah, right. <laughs> You're wearing the you're wearing the George Costanza J Crew instead. Oh, I exactly. thought I thought Vinny was I thought Vinny would be wearing the Gore-Tex coat. That's what I the thought. The Gore-Tex. <laughs> it is kind of cold in my basement. It would probably be served me well to have that coat. <laughs> Just don't spill any Chardonnay. No, you have oh, to gosh. give it to the liquor yeah. store guy. Exactly, <laughs> cheap Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah. Zach on Facebook writes in: I'm the opposite of Justin when it comes to Resident Evil. I love Resident Evil 7 and 8, and they're the only two I have played and beat. I hope they keep making them in first-person view. 8 was a fun exploration slash shooter for me. It didn't feel all that scary, really. Wow. Yes. So seven. Eight, eight is Village, right? Yes, is that Village. Okay. You got the newest one? That's the newest That's one. That's the newest yeah. one, okay. yeah. Yeah, seven I played that one. Seven, man, seven was messed up. Uh, good game, though, uh, and kind of tied back to some of the old ones with the way you had to find things and to unlock doors and stuff like that. But give me those old three, the first three, the third person, even Resident Evil 2's remake, uh, Resident Evil 1's remake. Resident, yeah. I have not played Resident Evil 3's remake. Um, Resident Evil 3 is okay. Just never one and two are still my favorite, but uh, I'll take those third person ones any day. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play eight eventually. Um, should be good. Seven was also in VR. Yes, it was. I I played that for like 10 minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, nope, I'm out. Can't do this. (laughs) I I, I close my eyes. I open them and it's still there. (laughs) I can't leave virtual world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And lastly, our buddy Jack Lugo on Twitter chimes in on the Mets managerial search. I think either Buck Showalter or Bob Guerin would be excellent choices. They need someone with experience. How about Tony? (laughs) 
<laughs> there is some talk of Beltron returning to the picture. I think he might be a decent bench coach if they go with an elder statesman like Buck. Buck seems to be the clear favorite, though. Everyone respects him. I honestly think much of Joe Torrey's initial success with the Yankees was owed, at least in part, to show Walter setting the stage for him during the pre-dynasty stint as Yankees manager. He also approved the cotton jerseys. I was going to say he was also on an episode of Seinfeld. I I always forget that Buck Showalter was the manager before Joe Torrey. I I don't know why I always forget that. I always just think that Joe Torrey did it all. But I think uh, I think Jack has a good point there that. Buck Walter kind of set, put the gears in motion, so to speak, before and I think canned. he's I think he's currently the favorite. Uh, I don't I don't Scherzer think they're pushing it. hard for him. Who's that? Scherzer. I thought I saw I, something that he was. He could be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have I have heard that as well. Um. So yeah. So I mean, we'll have to see. Uh. But again, as always, write in Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube comments, voicemail. You voice a uh, text line, whatever you want. Send us a message. Let us know what you think. Um, all right. We are going to shift gears. We're going to get started with the show now. Greg, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, take it away. Welcome to oh, before we before we get started here, I have to mention I have a new favorite Twitter account and it is MLB Jersey numbers. <laughs> and thank you, guys. Vinny, you sent it to me and it is You're just welcome. I was I was going through all their stuff. I'm like, they know everything. They got it all. This is the stuff I love. We love jersey numbers <laughs> on this podcast, especially me. We talk about them and they got all they got a bunch of the new ones. So that was all uh fun to see. Mm-hmm. Still not a fan of that Max Scherzer at number 21 though. I no, that's some weird luck. <laughs> he's a th- he's a 30s weird guy. Luck. He needs a 30 or a 37, something in that range. Oh. So yeah. Is it? Did um, they say why he's going with twenty one? Is there a reason for it? I don't know. He was thirty one, but I think that's retired for okay. someone. I can't remember, but uh, maybe that's he just dropping down. Yes, you know. thirty one is retired yeah. for Piazza. Oh, God. and Duh. yeah. So and forty one <laughs> is retired for Tom Seaver. Tom so Seaver, want, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess twenty one's the only logical. And he's worn 37 and 35. Oh, you know what? I don't I know where he's. Was 37? Hold on. I got it pulled up right here. Uh, yeah, 37 is also retired for Casey Stengel. So, okay. All right. So, so there you go. That's probably what that was. And Vinny, you found a Dodger dummy on Twitter. That was funny. That was dumb. <laughs> was like, I, I don't even know who he was. I, I have no idea who he was pitcher. either. But he, yeah, he quotes saying, You're either on my side by my side or in my way and you're either one of those two right yeah you should be two (laughs) not three you list out three and it it just reminded me of like the what was it was that movie with um oh um i can't think i had jennifer aniston and uh, she creates like a fake family with i can't think of his name jason's uh oh yeah they're uh oh yeah they go on the road trip or whatever and the one guy has the no regrets yeah tattooed on him and it just reminded me of something stupid like that and then there's people in the comments like oh this is so awesome what a great quote i'm just like it's it's wrong. You, you know, there's someone that's going to go and get that quote tote. Uh, oh, t- yeah, probably. On yeah. That, I'm just like, know. I'm like, it's it's illiterate. I'm like, this is making <laughs> sense. I'm like, this is where we're at in life, where people yeah. are, sounds like are a good staff member. That. We're building a right? new staff for uh, Janitor Nagy. So <laughs> you're right. You and you we we are going to get to movies later in this show, but I think Justin, he's already he's already yeah, jumping I, the gun right here. He's I, not he's not ready for a Kurt Warner movie. No, I, I added this. Oh, no, you don't like the story. No, I I don't it's a care. Good Disney, it, it would yeah, be a good Disney movie. I, I is it, guess. Is, is I don't Disney know. making it? I don't. Oh, they might be. I'm not think sure. So. I, I, that would Let make sense check. if they did. You know, shopping. For, uh, the Kingdom Super Bowl Kingdom maybe? Story Comp- Lionsgate is distributing it. Oh, so no. Okay. Oh, okay. But yeah, like um, it no says here, an upcoming biographical sports drama film about the NFL quarterback Kurt Warner. Follows his journey as an undrafted player who ascended to winning Super Bowl 34. It stars Zachary Levi, Anna Paquin, and Dennis Quaid. I Dennis just, Quaid still getting jobs. I don't. Yep. I mean, I, I guess if you're a big Kurt Warner fan, maybe this appeals to you, but I just don't care. Like he just he only retired like what 10 years ago, 11 years ago. So he's not even well, maybe. I don't I, I feel he, like yeah. it, it was it's just the story behind it. He's uh, a yeah, bag boy, and now he's yeah. a Super Bowl winning quarterback and you know, putting up these big numbers <sighs> and I don't know. Arena, yeah, draft, football. If people like Draft Day. People are going to love this movie. Oh, well, Draft Day. Draft Day. Draft Day is a wonderful movie. That's why. 
Are you but both it, you, you know, guys have seen Draft Day? Right? I'm gonna go when not. this movie oh, comes yeah, out. Draft. I'm gonna watch no. Draft Day instead of going to go see this. Just to <laughs> I'm send curious a message. what you. I'm curious what you think about that movie, Vinny. It's what? silly. Draft it's silly. Day. Draft Day. It's I've heard silly it's really and it's dumb. Costner, but it's, it's Kevin Costner being Kevin Costner. Yeah, it's got a couple moments. That you're like, yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know. I thought I didn't think it was that terrible. It is. And it is far. I loved when that movie came out. The Cleveland Browns were still an absolute joke. So it was like they would never, <laughs> they would never make this work. They would screw this up six ways. So, but that's it. I just, I don't know. I have no, no interest in seeing a Kurt Warner movie. But that's just me. Also, Zachary Levi plays. Fran, or Fandral in the Thor movies, or at least the last two. Also so Shazam. Also Shazam, yeah, of yeah. course. So he's in the DC okay. and Marvel. Another movie that I was really hyped to see and it wasn't that great, but that's just me. So because <laughs> it's DC, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, you're say it's DC you think, you'd think I would learn. You'd think I would Justin, well, Justin's you think still you would. dying on that hill. Oh, yeah, yes, don't worry. Are. I got plenty of Marvel movies I've never seen that we can talk about in a few minutes. So I'm <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Vinny. Vinny. So yeah, that's it. That's all, all I got. Right. Let's get to the cold stove. We I forgot about a guy last episode. The last guy to survive the sinking ship before the lockout was starting pitcher Jordan Lyles, the last man to sign before the lockout. He signed a one-year, $7 million deal with the Baltimore Orioles, which includes here, I, this is how you can tell we have no news because I'm deep diving on this fool. He included a uh, five uh, $500,000, uh, $500,000 signing bonus, salary of $5.5 million in 2022 with a 2023 club option for $11 million or oh. a $1 million buyout. So he got some money. Hmm. He can earn $17 million if his option is picked up. He was a former first-round pick by Houston in 2008. Uh, Baltimore will be his seventh Major League Baseball team in an 11-year career. Uh, his career stats... Uh, he's well with uh, he well, last year with Texas, he went 10 and 13. Five, uh, he had a five ERA and 32 starts, 108, uh, 180 innings pitched with 146 strikeouts and a 1.4 whip. So, I guess that can lead to uh, seven million dollars. <laughs> yeah. uh, career, he's 54 and 79, a 5.21 ERA, 1.4 whip. That's on par and a negative 2.5 war career. <sighs> That's so good, this right? is like this is like clearly Manfred telling teams to spend money. He's like, hey, we need to help the bargaining process. Don't show them you're being cheap fucks. You know, buy <laughs> yeah, something. Right? <laughs> spend money on someone. It'll help us. I was like, see, we spend money on really bad players. So exactly. we're helping out the common folks. So that's probably what that was, especially like seconds leading up to the deadline. Right. But uh, yeah. any, any thoughts on Jordan Lyles, guys? Have you, have you heard of him before? Should I start? Heard there? of him? I, I, I've heard of him, but I have no thoughts on him whatsoever. Yeah, I That's mean, let's be realistic. At this moment, Baltimore is where careers go to die for the yeah, most part. Yeah, I was going to say he <laughs> also signed with Baltimore. So yeah, yeah. I mean, although I, Justin, you, know, you are supporting the, their. I have, I have right a, yeah, I have, a, <laughs> got, I have an Orioles hat on. Got right his Rugnan uh, Odor hat. The Baltimore is like we signed Rugnan Odor, but like yeah, but the Rangers are paying for him, so yeah, you right? got you got to get someone <laughs> else. You cheap bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll have to ask. I think one of the guys from the three spot is a big Orioles fan. I want to say is maybe is it not Chris? Is it Sean? I don't know. One of them okay. I know is Ruffin well, they're all on the East, right? They're all on the East yeah. Coast. Yeah. So we'll have to figure that out, too. But yeah. So. But here's something. Uh, here's something, guys. The cover athlete of MLB 15, the show is headed to the KB. The bat licker himself. <laughs> Outfielder Yasia Puig, who's now 31. Agreed to a one-year, $1 million contract with the Kiwoom Heroes of Korea Baseball Organization. That news was broken by Jihoo Yu of Yonhap News in Korea. Um, so one year, one million. That is the max amount you can get in the KBO for a first-year foreign player. So he's making wow. league minimum and league maximum for his category. Uh, Puig, as you know, he hasn't played in the majors since 2019. Last wow. year, he was in the Mexican League where he slashed 312, 409, uh, 517 in 62 games and 247 wow. plate appearances. Not much, but doesn't look so bad. And if you remember back in 2018, a woman filed for a civil action against him, alleging he had sexually assaulted her in 2018. Criminal charges were never filed and both parties Finally settled out of uh, out of civil court this past October, so that just finally got cleaned up. I remember that. It seems like long, so long ago, because I guess it really was. 
Um, but uh, over his career, just to wrap up on Puig here, his career 277, 348, 475. Uh, 823 with an OPS plus of 122, 132 career home runs, 415 career RBIs, career war of 18.6 in a total of seven seasons. It was an all-star in 2014 and rookie of the year runner up in 2013. So, I mean, he was at, he was at the top of the league at one point and then it all just comes crumbling down. <laughs> yep. So and and we were there he after watching started licking his bats. Yeah. Yeah, there's a so, pine tar that did it to him. Yeah, <laughs> that had much. to be, had to be. That's it. <laughs> that's uh, so. I guess that's the finale for the signings, uh, at least for a little while. I'm, I mean, there's some minor league stuff minor happening, league but yeah. uh, I just those are those articles are literally like two sentences long. So there's and it, it's <laughs> followed by saying, "Who the hell is this guy?" Yeah, like, exactly. Who that, you know, <laughs> so. I, uh, I just can't uh, believe that Puig's already out of the league. I can't believe he hasn't played since 2019. That still yeah. blows my mind. He, but, yeah. There was a lot of talk of him going to um, uh, the Sox, though, yeah. there for a while. That's there right. Was, that. Yeah, and Atlanta. I, yeah. There was talk about Atlanta too in 2019, and then those uh, then those uh, allegations, allegations. Of yeah, they popped up and that did up it. and that just kind of sealed. Oh, can you his fate. can you imagine a combination of Tony La Russa and Yasiel Puig? Yeah, on the same team. <laughs> oh, that story boy. writes itself. It'd yeah. be perfect, yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I think Tony would be able to outrun him still. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. He the might be sprinting able to. matches in the beginning of the game during warmups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, <sighs> should we shift to the White Sox here? Sure. The only yeah. thing I really have to say, and this is. Awesome is Mini Minoso is a Hall of Famer voted in by what is it the Golden Era Committee or something like that? Am I yeah, that? yeah, that something sounds like that. about right. Yeah. So I mean, this guy, what he played in the fifties, in the sixties, in the seventies, and technically the eighties till he was like what sixty years old. He played like two games for one season as like a publicity <laughs> thing or something, but. I've listened to a lot on him the last couple of days. I've never watched him play, obviously, but I mean, just sounds like a man who truly loved baseball and loved the fans and was a pioneer being one of the first, you know, black Cuban players mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to play Major League Baseball. Um, so it's terrific. It's too bad that he is passed on. His number is retired, though, which is excellent. And uh, he is in the Hall of Fame, voted in by this committee, who just fell. I mean, speaking of another former White Sox, Dick Allen, mm -hmm. Mash and Dick yeah. Allen just fell. What was it? One vote shy. Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, of uh, making stakes. it in. Not right. And um, uh, Jim Jim Cott, former White Sox, does make it in uh, to the uh, to the Hall of Fame, voted in by the same uh, committee. So. That is, I mean, I was that's that's awesome. And as far as, yeah. you know, in, in my opinion, um, too bad all those guys couldn't get in, but uh, definitely glad uh, uh, Mini Minoso's in. For, for sure. sure. For they sure. were uh, talking about that on um, uh, uh, Bernstein and Rahimi uh, about Mini getting in. And he, he did play, Greg, just to clarify, until he was 54. 54. He, okay, I knew 19, it was old. In yeah. 1980, 54, he had two games. He had two. Um, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he had two at-bats and didn't get a hit. Um, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> um, but they were saying on uh, Bernstein and Rahimi that, you know, um, I forgot which White Sox, current White Sox player they were talking to. I think it was uh, Mankata. But he's uh, Minnie's looked at down in Cuba as like the Jackie oh, yeah. Robinson of oh, for sure. Um, Abreu, I know, is a big uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I and you know it's so it's not surprising that a lot of the the White Sox, you know, in the international draft, they're getting these Cuban players that want to yeah. play for them because of the history, which I had no idea before that, which I thought was really cool and makes a lot of sense. Um, they also said a story where. Uh, many after one of the games, uh, found this kid who was lost from his parents or whatever and didn't know how to get home. So many drove him, it was in the 50s, and he drove him to the kid's home in Evanston, uh, Illinois, on the mm. north suburb, and drove him and dropped him off. And they, yeah, I thought that was <clears> kind wow. of a cool thing for you know a big time baseball player to just you know. 
be caring enough to yeah. drop somebody off. Some That's awesome. Walking, stuff, say, passing it along like, I don't really care about this kid. I got a job to do and stuff yeah. like that. So I thought that was a cool story. I, I you know, didn't really know anything about Minnie before, you know, kind of this past year and a lot of the big push to get him into the Hall of Fame. So a lot of cool stories coming out about him. I know I, uh, I had seen a... Uh, a tweet um it was like a kind of like a chain of people just you know memories and in interactions they had with him and it was one guy who said when he was younger his dad took him to to get an autograph from Minnie minosa and i guess they were in one of the was it the restaurant or whatever the box is up in right field or whatever that's where he was and I, he said you know i was so excited to meet him because i knew how important he was and i spilled he had like a glass of milk on the table and he spilled the milk <laughs> all over the table and I guess the kid just said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And Minnie Minosa looks at him and goes, ah, a little milk never hurt anybody. Who cares? Just like that. They go, no. like, like, you know, you, awesome. there's, there's some people that would be like, yeah. oh, you know, offended and, and be like, I'm yep. out of here. You know, I'm not dealing yeah. with this bullshit. Um, so he's, from what I've read, seems like he was a really good guy. So, yep. yeah, um, that's that's what everyone is. Uh, yeah, that's what everyone all the stories that are coming out about him kind of confirm the same mm-hmm. thing. So which is great to hear. You know, you you like a good guy because there's just not many yep. of them anymore, unfortunately, that you know, truly love baseball, truly love the fans too, yep. and appreciated that. I mean, this guy, this guy has a mural of him in, in uh, Sluggers in um, Wrigleyville. That's right. I mean, yeah. That was that was kind of his joint. So I could tell you what he meant to uh, baseball and just a guy who loved being uh, on the field. So um, I think when he passed, I think I remember Alexei Ramirez uh, was wearing his number in honor of him for like a game or something like that. Uh, I do have a do have a memory of that, but uh, it was uh, it it was great to see. It was great yeah, to see for so. sure. <laughs> All right, what's next, Greg? What do you got? All right, I don't really have much on the White Sox. I did hear something <laughs> something weird today on a Boy. podcast. Uh-oh. I think uh, you guys know who Vinny Duber is. Yes. No. No. Okay, he a, is, a, he works for is it uh, NBC Sports Chicago? Yeah, he's a writer for them. Um, do you guys know who Chuck Garfine is? Yeah, it sounds like familiar. pre and yeah. pre and post, pre and post, yeah, for White Sox baseball. They had a podcast going today, and they were looking at second base options <laughs> for the um, Chicago White Sox, and it wasn't looking at anything in free agency, mainly because those lifeboats have departed. Yeah. Um, but uh, they were looking at trade candidates and they came up with a lot of good ones. Uh oh. But one, one one kind of just stuck out and Chuck Garfine, you know, brought it up. And it was the White Sox make a trade with the Mets for Robinson Cano. <laughs> oh god. Oh, no. Pe- all it would pass. Be, all it would be was just paying half his salary in exchange for just some Joe blow or whatever. I'm like, good God, that, that pretty much brought Robinson Cano, you know, that like resurrect that name just became resurrect. Right? Like I completely forgot because he was out on PD. Yeah. He was out for the whole like, season. Yeah. Wasn't he? For, he for most suspended. of the season. Cause this was like his what, like 10th offense or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And he still owed like what? 20, $30 million or something Jeez. like yeah. that. So I was like, "Ooh, God!" I mean, just hearing that name was like, "You imagine Robinson Cano playing second base with a hard one. pass? He's got to be, be like, he's got to be like three hundred pounds by now, right?" So, I don't know. Oh God, I wonder. He's like, "Well, it's a left-handed bat." Oh, he's thirty, and he's thirty. Bat. He's thirty-nine. He's gonna be he's forty. Really? Nine. He's, gonna be, he's, wow. he's gonna oh be forty in October. He'd be the oldest guy in the White Sox. Or he just turned thirty nine. He just turned thirty nine in October. So he'd be the oldest guy in the White Sox. Holy cow! But yeah, let's, let's have Tony. him play second base. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. DH. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Trevor Story the still out there. He is yeah. Still out there, you guys yeah. could still get Trevor Story. You know, those rumors were t- about him playing second, which I thought was kind of weird. But the I mean, lockout would have to end though. during the. Trade deadline, you might as well get him in free agency. They also brought up another interesting scenario. I don't know how realistic this is, but um, if the Yankees ended up signing uh, one of the shortstops, either Correa or Trevor Story, that kind of leaves Glaber Torres as the odd man out. So would the White Sox pursue, uh, pursue a trade for Glaber Torres? So I know he's Ooh. kind of fallen off the map. The yeah, last he year, hasn't had as good yeah. of a season. He was, he was, recently. he was on his, he was on a. 
he was kind of like on a track for, you know, a superstardom almost. Mm-hmm. I mean, last year he fell apart offensively, but that would be really intriguing for me. That would be. I would I would take Glaver Torres in a heartbeat with that yeah. kid. He's only 24, too. So, I mean, yep, he's, he's very just, young. He's still got a ton of baseball left ahead of him, hopefully. So More I like Robinson said, I don't Cano. know how re- I don't know how realistic that is. I can I can see the White Sox doing a Robinson Cano thing. Yep. <laughs> they, they never fail to to disappoint like something like that. So <laughs> Robinson, they would do Cano, the Robinson Cano trade, and then the Yankees would sign Correa and then uh uh, Torres or uh, Glaber Torres would be on the block and get traded away like yeah, a couple of weeks yeah, later right, after exactly. they do that trade. <laughs> exactly. Trade for so. Cano, you get him to play second. You sign uh, Adam Eaton to play center. You're all you're in good shape. <laughs> There so we let's, go. Let's, be, let's be, yeah. When you think Adam Eaton is your uh, number one, you know, issue, like, oh, he's out there. Then Robinson Cano comes up and trade talks, like, well, <laughs> you would just Mets would eat most of his salary. We just have to, we wouldn't give up anything for him. I'm like, no, stop it. So, yeah, right. <laughs> now we have to keep an eye on that. So, just, oh, boy. Just like, we're going to, we're going to will that one what into if? existence. This is like right? baseball and whatever, what if right now, our own version. Oh, gosh. Of it, so. Baseball, and whatever. <laughs> good God, no. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's so we're going to leave the White Sox on, on that note right now. Okay. So oh, that's not a good note. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep track. We'll keep track of the uh, second baseman uh, whenever uh, we can, I suppose, because mm-hmm. we can't do any of that right now. Unfortunately. Yep. So hmm. we can only, we can only scare ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Oof. What do you guys got for the Cubbies? Yeah. Uh, Vinny, did you put about Buck O'Neill getting to the Hall yeah, of Fame? Yeah, Buck O'Neill. Uh, first uh, was an Afri- African-American uh, coach in the major leagues, was mm-hmm. hired by the Cubs, um, and he was also in the uh, Golden golden Era. Is, what is that called? Yeah, the Golden Era Committee or something yep, like that. Yep, they voted yeah. him in. So, yep. I guess This is a completely new thing, right, this Golden I, Era? I think so, yeah. yeah okay. Yep. So, hmm. Yep, Buck O'Neill got into the Hall of Fame. Is he the one that that kind of he became a scout too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Is he, yes. is he the one that found Ernie Banks? Is he the one that, Ooh, that I honestly or, don't know. or it kind of put Ernie Banks on the Cubs radar? I think I heard something like that. I, I don't know if it was Buck so. O'Neill, but uh, yeah, wow. yeah, I want to say yeah, but I I don't remember. Yeah, I can't be. that is, I mean that that's awesome if he if he in fact was the one. So oh yeah, yeah. heck yeah, <laughs> um, Cubs the, legend. Yeah, the, the the other two things I found, and I, I tweeted this out, and Vinny immediately uh, broke my spirit with his responses. I, I can see him shaking his head already <laughs> right now. Uh, so Bleacher Nation posted this article. There's a report from Robert Murray, who I, had to, who I had to double check because I've never heard of Robert Murray, but apparently he is an MLB insider for Fansided, uh, and he is on a podcast with Mark Carmen, who is a guy from Chicago, actually. He's on WGN, if I'm not mistaken, uh, WGN Radio. Um, and they have a podcast called the MLB Insiders, uh, which I guess they're MLB Insiders. But anyway, in this article, it goes on to say that Robert Murray says he has heard some things about maybe Bryant possibly being open to coming back to the Cubs. Shocked. Mm. I can see yeah. the shock. In Justin, eyes. Justin wants him back. I want, want this so you want bad. KB. I do you want this so bad. You're going to try to will this into existence. So, so the, the only thing I'll say is Murray said he was happy that Chris Bryant had come up on the podcast and he's quoted as saying, that is something I've been working on behind the scenes. I was told by somebody who would know Chicago. I would not rule it out. It's been on my mind ever since I'm tracking that one. I do think Chris Bryant is going back. I'm sorry. I do think Chris Bryant going back to Chicago is a realistic scenario. And the number you threw out 27 to $28 million a year makes a whole lot of sense. And we'll see. So, I will say, I will say this though. It makes a lot more sense now that the Cubs signed Stroman. Yes. Because yeah. that's, that's some kind of, that's some kind of quote unquote window or new oh new you know window established possibly yep. at least for two years, so if they're going in on something, I mean that would make that would make more sense uh, before I mean than it did before the Stroman sign. Like I, said, I don't know how realistic it is. But yeah, I yeah. mean. I can. It's, I it's, it's a right. hope and dream kind of thing. I mean, we'll he, they did go on to say about how Chris Bryant has still also been very uh, complimentative of Jed Hoyer in the Cubs front office, which uh, I, I mean, can, if it happens, it happens. It shouldn't yeah. be their Not gonna come down, to do that. It's going to come down to the um, dough. Yeah, they got a lot more 
more important things. Yes, to they do. do. And spend the money on him. They um, have a lot yeah. more positions they need to fill for sure. And um, Robert Morey is the third cousin to Bill Murray. Really? Oh, <laughs> no, I have no idea. But I was like, Justin, oh, that'd be great. I, get, I knew I was going to get Justin with that one. <laughs> Justin, you also have gullible written on your forehead. Where? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh man, he got me good. I was like, like, oh, he's related to Brian Doyle Murray, too. Yeah, right? Oh, like, oh, that'd what be a, awesome. What a, what a trio right there. <laughs> uh, the only other thing I have, Greg, for the Cubs is I thought it was really funny. The two new additions to the Cubs, both Marcus Stroman and Clint Frazier, have been on Twitter just uh, roasting Yankee fans that have been coming after them for some reason. Good. Um, Marcus Stroman tweeted out the other day, uh, you know, hey, Chicago, uh, go get some jerseys because he's number zero. I know, Greg, you mentioned that you were pretty psyched about him being number zero. I love that. Greg, I'm are you going glad... to get a jersey? I oh, don't wow. know. There's some serious <laughs> but, thought behind that. Yeah, there was I, a long there's some, pause. There's something about the comeback of zero that is just so I love awesome. it because you see it and you, you probably see it most in what the NBA dudes yeah. wear. Yeah, yeah. Zero, but you Gilbert don't see Arenas, a lot of base zero. That was yeah. my favorite yeah. one. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm kind of happy he's sticking with it because he's been a single digit guy. I think he's worn like six, seven. But it was like, yeah, where the zero? No, I don't think. Right? Yeah. The zero, so. so so he tweeted, you know, go get my jersey. Can't wait to compete for the city and dive into the culture here. And then uh, this f- Nikki Butters, this tweet got Yankees fan. He said, you got one championship in 113 years while the core of that championship team has been completely traded away. And this guy's talking about an organization's culture. Stroman replied, Ella, uh, laughing my ass off out of nowhere comes another bitter Yankee fan. Y'all are hilarious. How miserable are you to tweet this? Because I'm excited to play for a historic franchise. You're getting nothing but coal for Christmas. You miserable soul. <laughs> that was great. I love that. So I, I, I saw awesome. that too. That was hilarious. So I thought that was great. And then same thing with um, uh, Clint Frazier just yeah. doesn't seem to give a shit about anything now that he's not a Yankee anymore. Uh, he said, I'll be continuing to wear number 77 for the Cubs. I requested seven, but unfortunately it was taken marking that as the first time I ever asked for that number. And then some random Yankees fan said, I'm so glad this guy's not a Yankee anymore. And he replied, so am I, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Apparently, who's wearing seven? Who's wearing seven for the Cubs, right? I now? honestly don't know, but I apparently, yeah. uh, and I did not know this. This stirred up some problems when he was a Yankee in 2017. He wanted the Yankees to unretire Mickey Mantle's number seven so he could have it. Like, yeah, that's. I'd yeah, be wow. like, dude, go pound sand. Who the hell yeah, are you? You're not yeah. getting Mickey Mantle's number. No one's so. getting Mickey Mantle's number. Right? No, and look, he's re- yeah. look, he's not retired for all of baseball. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So apparently, he was making fun of the Yankee uniform and also stating that he'd be leaving his razor at home because he could not grow his beard out and grow his hair out as a Yankee due to their uh, facial hair requirements. Yeah. So yeah. That's uh, that's all I got for the Cubs, though. I thought that I, was pretty I don't funny. know what Clint Frazier is going to bring to the Cubs, but, um, yeah, I am, and yeah. it's only he a sounds like deal he's too. eager. And seventy seven is also, I think, I, I like to say I, for, before MLB jersey numbers. I mentioned last week that will Clint Frazier be uh, mentioned on our episode seventy seven? That was assuming he'd stick yep. with the number. It looks like he is. So a couple of oddball numbers coming the Cubs' way. Give him a new kind of give him a new look out there on the field. Yep. So I like nice. it. I like that number too. So <clears throat> there you go. So yeah, that's all I got that's for the, the Cubs. Cubs. Yep. Nice. Baseball, MLB. I got one thing to we don't have to go through all of this, but I, I wanted to mention one thing really quick if that's okay with you guys. Sure. Sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sh- I'm speak I'm just gonna shift gears to the the pirates right over here. I'm just gonna cover a couple of things that uh, I've, I've uh, <laughs> discovered. So uh, really quick too. I also had um, uh, Jordan. Uh, I also had the Jordan Lyles news hidden away. Um, I thought initially that his uh, deal did not go through, but apparently it did at the last minute. They made it a fish official without the physical, I guess. I don't know, but hmm. Anyway, so the Pirates. So Jose Quintana is a Pittsburgh Pirate. That's official now. Steven Brault got DFA'd. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, outfielder Ben Gamble also avoided arbitration with them. He signed a one-year $1.8 million with incentives, um, which are, I don't know, a plate appearance-based uh, or something like that. 
Uh, Gamble was a waiver claim, if you remember, from Cleveland in 21. And to make room for him back in 21, they DFA'd uh, Michael Feliz, who was a relief pitcher. So we'll come back to that name in a little bit. So infielder Yoshi Tsugo returning on a one-year, $4 million deal. He avoids arbitration. Uh, So first baseman Colin Moran was DFA'd as part of that move. So... Thinking the name Feliz and Colin Moran, that officially means that the Pittsburgh Pirates have now parted ways with all four players from the Garrett Cole trade, including Joe Musgrove, who's still playing, um, Jason Martin, I don't know who he is, Michael Feliz and Colin Moran. Those are the four players they got for Garrett Cole, and they are gone just as much as Garrett Cole is. So wow, found that interesting. So that trade bad. did not Oof. work. Those guys are gone, and two of those guys were DFA'd for one year arbitration, like replacement level dudes. Yeah. So I mean, that's just not like, good. Ugh. I mean, you get Ben Gamble, you have to cut a, a reliever that was part of it. I don't know, but yeah, I thought that was just kind of, uh, kind of, uh, ugh. <laughs> kind of uh, ugly right over there. A little so, bit. A little bit. That's not good. Um, anything else you guys want to cover uh, around Major League Baseball, if I, we can even call it that? I mean, I the, mean there's... the only thing that kind of caught my attention was Schwarber seeking a three-year, $60 million contract. You that guys think really cheap. That's what I was going to say, Vinny. I would so jump on I would that, take right? that in a heartbeat. Oh, so, man. Uh, that's a, that'd be a great deal. Now here, okay, Vinny, here's a question. And Greg, this is for you, too. Uh, say he comes back to the Cubs and you put him at first base instead of, well, I mean, I guess depending on how Schwindel does, would you do that? Or would you say, eh, we'll he stick could, you back he, in left field? He, he might be your DH. Yeah. That's yeah. The other I was going to say yeah. he could, he could play first. I mean, I, I don't know how his defense would be for compared to Schwindel, but Schwindel is no defensive first no. baseman. No. Um, you know, he plays outfield. He can, I don't know. He, Go back to trying to play catcher and be a third backup. <laughs> yeah. Be a third catcher. <laughs> um, you know, um, I don't know. And if there's DH coming, um, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see if that. I have to imagine that he'd want more than that. Um, yeah, I, I, that seems low, especially yeah, for the tier does. he was on for part of the season last year. Yeah, um, but I, I don't know. Uh, I also saw that uh, somebody tweeted out. I forgot who it was on uh, Cubs Twitter about. Cubs trading for Joey Gallo from the Yankees. From the Yankees? Which I thought was, mm. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Although his stats are, I mean, his average is garbage. Awful, yeah. He, oh, yeah. He's, he's like a, actually really good um, <clears throat> war stats. Um, mm-hmm. f- it, it's mind boggling. He had what was it? He had a 199 batting average, but he was a 4.7 war player yeah. last year. I was like, how is that possible? <laughs> so, uh, you know, 121 OPS plus. So uh, the average isn't there. So he's going to be one of those frustrating type of players that the Cubs have had on their roster for, you know, during their championship window where, you know, they probably, you know, they hit, you know, home runs, but then, you know, they can't move the runner along or, you know, they don't do anything like that. So I don't know if they do it whatever but i don't know what they'd have to give up to get uh joey gallo but yeah, he's i didn't still see under, that floated around out yeah, there yeah that would probably call it because he's under control for like one more year is it? yes before he hits that's right yeah okay all right yeah so yeah joe, joe joey gallo coming to the cubs would be huge oh, yeah, <laughs> in my so opinion be. but um yeah he's also he's also an underrated defender he's a really good he's really good in the outfield so yeah two-time gold glove like, gold yeah. glove winner so yeah yeah uh, getting back yep. to Schwarber, though, I would take him in a heart. Would you? I would, oh, yeah. I would. I would. They find need that left. Yeah, that, we need that left handed power. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if, we're not getting it from, if we're not getting it from Robinson Cano, then we need it from, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. from Kyle Schwarber. <laughs> for, for I, sure. He would make a lot of sense for the Sox. He would be able to give Abreu some breaks at first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Playing the outfield. <laughs> give Eloy a break in left field yeah. when he well, does just something never let dumb him play. out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He does and some he DH, next idiotic so. stuff out there, and he can DH. Yeah, so. yeah. I I think it would make a lot of sense, but yeah, yeah we'll see see where he we'll ends. See where up that at. goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, baseball lockout, dark dark days. Get your shit together, <laughs> yes. MLB. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even think I. I mean, 
just kind of listening in on uh, MLB uh, radio on Sirius XM and just kind of reading up on whatever you can. I mean, it's uh, whether on the break or not, but it doesn't look like, I mean, the negotiations, like the um, Players Association will bring up, you know, ABC and MLB won't even touch it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's Jeez. like, no, we're not even discussing that. So, it's 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 an ugly it seems to be a really ugly start so far so we'll we'll see what leads into 2022 i suppose but right oh boy this could be this could be a long one boys we'll we'll see strap no, in i hope not yeah, yeah. i hope not <laughs> yeah i, hope I want not. free agency to resume yeah all, it was so good yeah it was, it was a, lot of, still a great lot start. of players out there yeah for sure <laughs> so yeah, yeah it'll be interesting interesting they need to end it soon yeah agreed agreed um vinny do you want to since we're on this great uh <laughs> low-key downer mood right now should we it's, it's a good segue for uh manures of the midway what do you say yeah. it's it's newer <laughs> which is good and it's ma in front of it right <laughs> which is also uh, good <laughs> yeah which is uh, also good newer. um <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it, is it really? Because we go from something you can't watch to something that is unwatchable if you can watch it. Um, God, I, I mean, all, all those people that love Andy Dalton, you you got it. All last <laughs> you got week. what that, you wanted. That, that, that is what you wanted. Yeah, the Bears offense really functions well without him. Although they I, these people that were pining for Andy Dalton, we, did you guys sleep during the first game against the Rams? He wasn't good during that either. They didn't win that game either. And I always what was it was going in the Lions game. Oh, they would be six and four with Andy Dalton. So six and four. Okay. They, they're two games above 500. That's not good. Like they're not that good still. <laughs> yeah, and I doubt no. they'd be six and four with Andy Dalton. Let's be honest. And I, I loved, I don't know who tweeted that out. The, 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 the picture of what was that? Um, oh, what's that Quentin Tarantino movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Do you guys remember that one? The, I can't uh, think of the the title the title of the movie. No, um, that just came out, or no, with Jamie Foxx. It was the western. Uh, oh, Django Unchained. Yeah, yeah. yes, with uh, <laughs> it's Samuel L. Jackson when he's holding Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, he just got shot. <laughs> yeah. Paul Barkish and Andy yeah. Dalton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it's it was it was hilarious that Hub did not tweet out. He usually not live thing. tweets during the game yeah. about how Andy Dalton's not prepared or Justin Fields isn't prepared. And oh, see, he's a rookie and he makes mistakes. Not a peep, not out a of peep. about Andy Dalton. Crickets it was him, yeah. hilarious. <laughs> so yes, not good. Um, uh, a couple notes here. I don't know who put that in. Oh yeah, reason, I found that. Yeah. This is pathetic. Um, Matt Nagy's passing offense is averaging 173.8 yards per game. Good for last in the NFL. Oh, not God. surprised. <laughs> yeah, for oh. Mr. Offensive Genius. He's uh, he's the offensive pathetic. guru, Vinny. Yes. Come on. And by comparison, this is a great stat. Sid Luckman in 1943 to 1947 averaged 189.5 <laughs> yards passing per game. So the Bears <laughs> have gone back in time and are now worse than the 43 to 47 Bears of <laughs> passing offense. Yes. Pathetic. So yes, that is that is awful and pathetic. Um, it is manure, and none of it is the good manure. Not the hey, good manure. you know, at least Justin Fields is. They're rushing him back to play in the game against the Packers this week because it's a Packers yeah. Bears week, and that's a big deal. And oh God, if I were him and I were Allen Robinson and anybody that has any value, I'd be like, no, nope, I'm not playing. This guy's going to get me killed. I'm not doing this. You know what I mean? So, someone else tweeted out, if I was uh, Justin Fields, I'd be asking for a second opinion <laughs> to make sure that I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not medically cleared. Right. Are you yeah. sure about that? I need another opinion. I, I, I think my ribs are still... I'm Hold on. I'm going to go bang yeah. against the deck over well, he's gonna there. Be like, I'm gonna say, my he, ribs. He's going to be like Homer Simpson, you know, when he wants to, you know, work from home and he's walking of the construction site and hoping the yeah. anvil falls out. Everything's falling right. around. That's what, it, yeah. that's what it comes to, you know? What a oh, joke. God, yeah. I I really need to find a new franchise of football team to watch because I've just about <laughs> had it with this team. I, they are garbage. I was really positive about that first Bears-Packers matchup. I'm the complete opposite this one. This one is oh, going to be I, a bloodbath. I, I hate <laughs> the Packers awful. with a passion, and I can't stand Aaron Rodgers at all. <laughs> but, man, I hope they light the Bears up this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I've... 
and the sad thing is the McCaskey still won't fire anybody after this weekend. I, I well, the, I, I saw an article today too. That's like, Oh, this will be Matt Nagy's last game. I'm this like, will be his oh, undoing. Yeah, this will be, yeah. I'm like, Oh sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We heard that about the line. Yeah, he, he gets pants. Yeah. Pants. He gets pants <laughs> every time he takes the field. Like was this any different from this other than it's the well, Packers, so. you know, in, yep. in the, when I was younger, I always liked how they would be like, oh, you know, the Bears Packers, Lovey Smith, his first press conference, we're gonna we're gonna beat the Packers, and that's gonna be one of our our main goals for this when he was coach. Yeah, I get it. It's a rivalry game, that's a big deal. But this team has so many other problems. This organization has so many other problems. Focusing all your attention on a team you play twice as twice a season because they're your natural rival. It's it's not any good. It's not worth. They it. can't even do anything yeah. on that problem. No, they yeah, can't even do anything on that. So why bother? <laughs> can't even so, do right? anything. Yeah. So, uh, fine. Can't even flush the toilet after they're done shitting. I'm sure. So, no. I mean, they got they got. I mean, they they're just all screwed from top to bottom. So, <laughs> well, damn, Nagy's there. gonna have to start practicing on unclogging toilets. <laughs> he yeah. has. He better start practicing <laughs> now. Job. Guys are. Yeah. Maybe oh. he's gonna, you got yourself a front plunger. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, this is you know how to use this. You're gonna wear yeah. it on your head <laughs> instead of your instead of your visor. Give him the dunce cap. So, yep. Uh, him and that Dodgers pitcher, get ready. It's coming. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Justin, any any good news from the Blackhawks? Justin? Yeah, I'll what run through this real guys? quick. I know, Vinny, you were asking about the Malcolm Subban trade. Um, yeah, he wasn't after they Lincoln and kind of took off last season. Uh, Flurry, obviously, future Hall of Famer, got his 500th win tonight with a shutout against Montreal. Subban wasn't going to be in Chicago anytime soon again. He was going, he was going to stay in Rockford with the AHL team. So I, that's fine. I don't think he's a really NHL career goalie. He's maybe a backup at best. Um, so I have no problem with it. He wasn't, he wasn't going anywhere. Um, Taves finally got his first goal tonight out of the whole season. And we're oh, like 20, 20, 30 games mm-hmm. into the season. Now he's another one. This uh, my first goal. Yeah. My he missed, my, he missed the first part of the season. He did miss. He? he did miss the first part of the season. Oh, or, did he? Oh, okay. He was coming back. He was getting ready for um from because he was out all of last season. I just I don't have any time for him anymore. The whole captain serious. The whole he's a he's an amazing captain and leader and that all went out the window. It all went out the window for me. And and then you're not for everybody though. For mo- yeah, for everybody. And, and you're not producing. Yeah. Um, no thanks. You know, so I really. Don't let the door hit you when they trade you or they don't renew your contract. Um, <laughs> this is his final year, right? I, next year, I believe, is his final next, year. Next year. I think wow. him because him and Kane have dual dual matching contracts. So, okay. uh, and don't look now, the Hawks are nine and five in their last 14 games. So, are they Uh-oh. gonna make the look, playoffs? Look out. Uh, no, yeah. but they're at least looking competitive. <laughs> uh, they beat Montreal tonight two to nothing. Montreal is actually worse than them this season. So, uh, I don't know how big of a victory that is, but that's all I got for the Blackhawks. You still playing the hockey video games, Justin? You give of course. Too, yeah. No, I, yeah, I still I play um, NHL '94 Retro on That's PS5 a, yeah. a lot. I play that a lot just because it's it's the newer That's newer the rosters, but the old yeah. teams, so or the yeah. old old graphics. But yeah, that's old about graphics. it. Yep. There you go. Mm-hmm. I got a a story for you guys about how old I am. Um, I had Uh-oh. a. I had a moment of being super old. Uh, and just ago. for the record, he's the youngest on the podcast. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Vinny, so you're younger is, than both oh, of us. This, would, this, this, is is really, this is really bad. Um, so I've been working late, been busy at work, and uh, Gretchen, my wife, has been going to bed early, and I went up there to go to bed finally after working late, and the dog, Walter, is in the bed. So I, being a sucker for my dog, I don't kick him out of bed. I... Just crawl in the bed, and he's gracious enough to leave me a sliver of room for me to stretch my legs <laughs> down the bed. So I do that, and as I'm doing that, I have to sleep with my knees on top of each other. Um, and, and I don't normally sleep like that. So when I woke up for my the midnight feeding for my daughter, I tried to get out of bed, and when I put my feet down, I almost fell on the ground because my knee locked up and I was in such pain. <laughs> Oh, and I, no. I'm literally like, I thought I was going to have to crawl to her room. I <laughs> get myself up um, and hobble like an old geezer all the way to her room, down the hall, yelling out curse words and apologizing <laughs> to her that I'm not getting there fast enough because she's screaming bloody murder because she's hungry. 
that was the <laughs> the worst moment of my life. I'm oh, it's only going to get better. Vinny. old. Oh, I know. Oh, and I'm no. sitting there as as I'm feeding her too. I can't get my knee to unlock either. It's in oh, such pain. Geez. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. That's how much pain I was in. Oh my god! I could. I now I'm sitting there rocking her for like 30 minutes afterwards, trying to loosen up my knee so I can like get out of her room and like in some normal fashion and not be cursing from the pain. But I yeah, I managed oh, no. to end up doing it. But it took quite a long time and i've never felt older in my entire life hey, Vinny, trust me once you get well, i'll be 35 this year but um i just remember the last ice hockey team i played on we'd play on sunday nights we play on sunday monday i would be so sore <laughs> tuesday wednesday thursday friday i'd still be progressively less sore but still sore Saturday I'd feel great, and then Sunday I'd play Sunday. again. And the whole thing would start over, start the cycle but over. You, the you're playing sucks. hockey. I was yeah. sleeping in bed. <laughs> <It was> just... <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, I, yeah, something yeah. something essential to his, you know, to yeah. his survival. So sleeping is good. Is also sleeping killing him good. at the same time. Yeah. So oh man, I'm, I'm I'm envisioning Vinny crawling like Tim Curry. In the Plaza Hotel in Home Alone 2. <laughs> right. After, you know. <laughs> Stay in your exactly. rooms. Stay yeah, in your rooms. Stay guest with a gun, you know. <laughs> and he's just there army crawling. Exactly. With no use that's of a, his legs. So. That's exactly what I would look like. Yep. That's, that's, that was close. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. Absolutely <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. Well, make sure you, make sure you, you kind of sprawl out tonight, Vinny. You yes. Know, that, I know. He, he's. Room. He's in the bed right now, and I just looked at him. I said, "You're not sleeping there tonight." Yeah. Once I crawl in there, you I know, can't do this again. Vinny, I'm glad you brought this up. About six months ago, I was laying on the couch and I stretched really far, and I felt something <laughs> like pop in my calf. And it, it was a Charlie horse. I've in in 34 Ooh, years, I've yeah. never gotten a Charlie horse before. Oh, ever. Boy. That was your first time. That was my first time. Wow! wow. I thought I was dying. Charlie was like, horse oh version. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is wrong? With it my does life? feel. Like, it can feel well, like. And death, then and yeah. then I reach down and I just feel this huge like hunk of meat in my calf and i'm like what the hell is that you know erica my wife is like what is wrong with you it's a charlie horse it'll be fine and i'm like but it hurts and it took like a good hour before it went away yeah did she, did so, she punch you that sounds like something she she's did. like she oh she's like oh I, I get those you're fine i'm like no i i don't get those you don't understand but this is also the same woman who when i fell down the stairs in the middle of the night she didn't come check on me. And then when I came up to the bedroom, she's like, are you OK? And I said, yes. And then she just burst out into laughter and tears because she was laughing so hard. That, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my wife would do the same thing. Too, yeah. She would laugh true. at me if I got hurt. So, you know, yeah. I think that's what wives do. Her, her response was, well, I heard you get up and you were talking to the dog. So I assumed you were OK. <laughs> <laughs> thanks i wonder thanks, i wonder how long she would have left you unconscious if you would have like gotten knocked um, yourself out it depends how much she, she probably needed. would have fallen back asleep yeah i was say if she had work in the morning she would have fallen back asleep for sure yeah so i'll just i'll call the ambulance in the morning he'll, he'll still be there he's not going yeah. anywhere and, and if he's dead he's dead he can't insurance, do anything about the life it insurance policy's paid up we're yeah. fine we're good yep so. <laughs> oh good lord so Nice. All right. I guess are we ready for whatever? Yeah, let's sure. do it. All right. Let's so do this, it. This week we are talking about movies that we somehow missed. Uh, whether we missed them because we avoided them, we weren't interested, we don't get it, we don't get why they're popular, or maybe just somehow, some weird chance, you just never saw the damn movie. So um, I guess I'm gonna start off um as you guys know, and maybe people that listen to this podcast, I would consider myself someone who's into some really nerdy shit, whether it's Star Wars, video games. Uh, it's been well documented how many Star Wars novels I've read throughout my life. Um, but one thing I have never seen, read, or touched is Lord of the Rings. I have never seen any of the Lord of the Rings movies. Good for you. Yeah, I, wow. I never, okay. never saw any of them. I'll be honest. It's it's not that I I don't wish I don't wish ill will against anyone who loves them. You know, rock on, do your thing. I have no interest in those movies whatsoever. None. The, there Absolutely is only zero. one trilogy, and it's not of the rings. It's, it's of Star Wars. The, it's Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, two. Of the tri- yes. of the Jedi. Yeah. Or, yeah. I forgot what that quote was. <laughs> well, I'll, the best I'll, line of that movie. I'll piggyback yep. off of that really quick, Justin. I've never seen any of the Hobbit movies. Nope. Never saw. I've not seen those. I uh I have seen Lord of the Rings the three of them but I mean they're just I haven't revisited them in 
I don't probably, want to. Probably no, ever. I just, probably I, I ever. don't have yeah. any interest. I saw him once in yeah. theaters and that was it. The the last one, the last one really turned me off where they had like five or six different endings in yeah. that movie. And I'm that's just, the one that won Best Picture. Yeah. They, they were all nominated for Best Picture and Return was, of the King was it, one. Was it the Two Towers, the second one that was supposedly pretty good or was that boring? I, two Towers was really boring. Two, okay. And yeah, two to- and believe it or not, Two Towers is the one I like the most. Really, oh, I, so I, mean, I didn't. I didn't really, and I didn't really. Care. I mean, they were they were. I mean, they were beautifully shot. I guess you could say. Not a big Peter Jackson guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but for some reason, two. But yeah, Two Towers is really boring. But for some weird reason, like that's the one that I kept me in quote unquote engaged versus the other ones. I don't know why. And I, that could be full. I, I could be completely mixing it up with some, some another one. Return of the, of the King, I thought was probably the most action packed one, but again, that the endings, the endings, yeah, the endings, plural, the endings. just dragged on. And yeah. that's what was the most like boring part about it. <clears throat> but yeah, the, like the act there was, I, th- I would say that was like the most action packed, the two towers. It didn't like get action packed until, Till the very end. end. Yeah, the yeah. very end. Mm-hmm. I thought that was I thought that I thought that kind of, I don't even know if it saved it. I could be full of shit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <good. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Shayla Shayla's with you, Justin. I that saw one. that. I saw that. But uh she also wrote in something else that you uh, probably I don't know if we can kill, I don't know if we can talk to her you. anymore. Yeah. yeah. So never yeah, a Bond fan. It's she okay. is. <laughs> But never yeah, so seen Star Wars. She's never seen any of the Star Wars. Really never which seen just Star Wars. Blows my wow. mind. Um, Justin, you've never seen Bond movies, so it that's e- true. It equal, yeah. So. yeah. 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 Her and I are on opposite. He's not ends the, of the only spectrum. one, apparently. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, and it's funny. That's not the only one. Uh, Jennifer also wrote in said she never saw any of the Star Wars. Um, let's see. Vinny, your mom wrote in said she's never really seen any of the Star Wars besides the first one. Um, and then also uh, on Twitter at Lizzie McWriter, I believe she's a friend of Jack Lugo. She said she's also never seen any of the Star Wars or Star Trek, which I've never really seen any. I've never been a Star no. Trek guy either. And but uh, to be to yeah. be fair, yeah, to be fair, I've never seen a Star World either. So I know no. she wrote that in Star Wars, Star Trek, or Star World. I didn't so. even know that was a thing. So I didn't know that it's, was a it's, thing. It's, it's it's not a thing. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh. uh, maybe unless it's like I don't know some plan. Not from outer space bs maybe that's the yeah. world i don't know but <laughs> um, um greg how about you i've never people people get shocked that i've never seen this movie and i i don't know what the reason for it is i guess i've never had any interest in it i mean i'm, I'm sure both of you have seen it i have oh. never seen et Oh, really? Never I've seen, seen bits it. And pieces. I saw that when I was a kid. Didn't like okay. it. Watched it a lot. Yeah. Didn't I, like it. I don't I I don't I don't have a reason for ever seeing it. Um it a lot of people not, love it, but it's okay. Okay. It's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna I mean, I'm, I'm not glad gonna we're say, all kind oh of on God, the same you page seen here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, not, I'm not gonna bash you for it because it's 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 okay. Okay, because I thought I was gonna get a bashing for that one, but apparently no. not. So we're on the same page. No, th- that. that's one if so. you were like, Hey, there's nothing on you want to watch ET, I'd be like, yeah. Nope, we can just not watch anything. I'm good. I like <laughs> I I mean you, yeah, you your girls might want want to watch it and it's it's okay to have on like to see to say you, you've seen it once but i mean okay. you're going to want to eat reese's pc reese's pc P- reese's pc reese's sorry yeah, reese's sorry, yeah reese's <laughs> reese's pc uh <laughs> after after that cuz there's yeah they have that and i think there was like some dispute between m&ms and yeah Reese's supposedly the story and... goes they went to m&ms and said hey we want to use your product in the movie and they turned them down so they went yeah. to the reese's or reese's as i like to say yeah uh they went to them and they're like yeah shit we'll, we'll yeah we'll, we'll take your money yeah let's do it so right. uh yeah and so what that became iconic then or something i think that kind or... of put yeah, Reese's okay. pieces on the map i guess oh, right okay. yeah yeah the, their popularity soared and then uh there's also i think there's there's a couple um Shout outs to Star Wars in mm-hmm. the movie too. So okay. there, there's there's a reason to see it as a Star Wars fan, Greg, because there is I think there's Yoda in there. And I then know. there's also the fan theory that 
ET is actually um, like a descendant of Yoda with some of the stuff that he does. Um, oh, okay. I do I do know in, I want to say it's Revenge of the Sith when they're in the Galactic Senate. If you if you freeze frame yes, it at the right time, right. one of the groups from one of the con- uh, countries, planets or whatever, Plans, their, their yeah. delegation is all little ETs. So oh, yes, that's right. they, are, <laughs> oh, they are in I the never, Star Wars I never universe. Knew that. Oh, yeah. okay. So, Interesting. Yep. so right. that, that would be if your girls want to watch it, you don't have to say pass. You could say sure. And then you look for all the Star Wars hidden. Yeah, stuff the references. Okay, yeah. so it gives me Easter something eggs. to do, I guess. Yes. I try to ward off boredom or something. <laughs> yeah, <know>. sleep. <laughs> one one <laughs> or the eat other. Some, <laughs> eat some Reese's Pieces. There you go. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Vinny, what about you? What are some movies that you somehow missed out on? Um, you know, I was just looking at like the best picture, um, like the, the Oscars best picture mm-hmm. and over the years. Um, and looking at like the past 10 years from 2011 to 2020. Yeah. I haven't seen a single one of those, um, <laughs> I, to be honest. And the only one that, I mean, Argo, that looked kind of that's a good interesting. Movie. Birdman, I kind of wanted to Saw see that. because it was, looked uh, weird. kind of yeah. funny with the weird uh, as hell. Whole, is it weird? It's weird, but I, um, I enjoy. it. I never it. saw that one. I saw Argo. Argo was okay. But, uh, okay. Ar- yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Argo's good. Th- there's not a lot there. But then looking at 2001 to 2010, I saw seven of the 10 uh, that were in that decade. So you are I, a cultured man. <laughs> yeah, kudos to myself uh, during that time. Yeah, it was what? Gladiator, Beautiful Mind, uh, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, um, Crash, The Departed, No Country for Old Men. Uh, I did not see Slumdog Millionaire. Never and The Hurt that. Locker. Um, those I, were all. Yeah. Did you like you, The Hurt Locker, Vinny? I did. I, I think I went in with the interpretation that it was something else that it wasn't. Was, it, was that it, Jeremy Renner? Renner, yeah. Renner, yeah. 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 Catherine yeah. Bigelow. Yeah, movie. where he's, yeah. Yeah, he's yep. on that the, beat um, Avatar the for best. That beat Avatar for best. Ugh, Good. Well, really Avatar was. sucks. That, yeah, no, everyone was, that was a big hyped one or whatever. Yes, yeah. That was, oh, God. I, I can't believe they're like, I, I could have, I, I wish that was on my list of movies. I didn't Me see too. That big. Yeah. Me <laughs> too. Unfortunately, it's not. Oh, hey, it sucks. Hey, Vinny, can I chime in really quick since you read that list? I got to yeah. throw in something because you read a movie off of that that uh, I have actually never seen. Okay. I have never seen Gladiator. Neither have I. That's on my list. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? I've never, never saw seen. It. No, never seen it. Nope. That was on TV a lot too. Like on TV. Was, so how did yeah. you guys miss that? I have that? no idea. And that's it's Russell Crowe. Pretty good movie. Is a, a good show. I heard it was really yeah. good. Yeah, Justin, I'm yeah. I'm surprised being in the history guy that you are. Yeah, I don't, I'm I don't surprised you I, haven't seen it either. I don't know how I missed yeah. that, and it always comes. Why did up you just show that in class too? I've had students <laughs> ask me if we can show that, and I'm like, yeah, no, I enjoy having a job. We're not watching Gladiator in class. <laughs> what? What's nuts? wrong with that? The, the violence. <laughs> well, the kids get that on the daily. Oh yeah, that's nowadays. true. <laughs> that's true. Might as well keep it in a somewhat controlled environment. Yes, right. So. <laughs> yeah, this is your have Hollywood show them instead of real life. <laughs> this is your thirty minutes of uh, sanctioned violence you can watch things in right? class. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gladiator. I've never seen either. Um, wa- is it Joaquin Phoenix and uh, yes. Rus- yeah, Russell, Russell Crowe? Crow, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a Very that's good. a good call. It's a good, good movie. Call. I would um, recommend. I'll, I'll bash you guys for that when you guys should see. Yeah, it. I was gonna. Fair that, that's probably a bashing. So, um, let me read. My buddy Greg wrote in, and I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to have a chat with him about this. He said, "I've never seen any of the three Austin Power movies or the Shrek movies because I find Mike Myers extremely annoying after Wayne's World, at least." Um, I will okay. admit, I love the first two Austin Powers movies. The third one, I I don't like at all. Um. Oh really? Just, the third one yeah. I don't like. I don't like how they turned. Uh, spoiler for a movie that came out like 17 years ago. Um, I don't like that they turned Doctor Evil into a good guy at the end. <laughs> I, I, no, I want to. Yeah, I like it. I like it brothers. more now, so because of the whole Spectre. Oh god, oh, I was just gonna see. parody. Of, just, parody. <laughs> see, maybe I, I need love to see that. the movie. Just, maybe I need to see oh. Spectre just for that. But yeah, so We've, like the first two, I loved. I I could quote those first two movies by heart. Uh, Wayne's World yeah. is okay. Um, Shrek, the first Shrek is fine. I I'll sit and watch it if it's on or somebody wants to watch it. I remember when Shrek Two came out. I was watching VH1. I don't know why I was watching VH1, probably for music or something. But anyway, they were like going so hard on like Shrek Two. They did like their own little promo shows about Shrek Two and interviewing the cast. And I was like, wow, this this must be it's going to be really good if like cable tv is getting in on this and i remember i saw it and i'm like this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen 
was it Puss in Boots with Antonio Banderas oh, and all that's that right. stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I never yeah. saw I that. I think there's a third and fourth Shrek. Never saw there those. Is, there are. There I think are, I've yeah. seen the third one. Yeah, I, the second one wasn't bad. No, um, I th- I thought it was kind of I don't know rewatching it. It's kind of funny with how they take like Never Everland and yes. turn it into like Hollywood, and you yeah. got all these famous storybook characters. I, the Shrek movies are okay. Um, you know, the first one's really good. The second one's okay. It kind of goes downhill. Yeah, you know, they kind of just dwindle, dwindled down. Yeah, but yeah, the first two Austin Powers are great. The I third love, one's yeah. all, only funny because of Spectre. Um, the the parody <laughs> on a parody, and um, yeah, that that just that makes it great. But yeah, the third one is more of like a cash grab. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. At the point they're just. Yeah, supposedly no, the fourth yeah. one is still being developed in the works. And yeah, it's like, oh, oh God. interesting to how they're going to do that with how old Mike Myers. Mike is, Myers but... pretty much killed his career with the Love Guru, so I don't. I, know. That was the last yeah. the one he, I can. He remember. had that very yeah. small part in. Was, um, oh, what was Glorious Bastards? In, thank you, Glorious yeah. Bastards. Yep. Yes. And, I know, and he also I'm, he also had a, a a very small part in the Queen biopic too, which he was actually pretty good. I in didn't too. see that one. Oh, okay. He was okay in that, but I mean, we're talking like ten minutes in the entire movie. He's yeah, in, that's it, I just so. remember when he came in on Glorious Bastards, like, oh my gosh, that's Mike Myers, and it was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Mike Myers. His accent like, was about hasn't been yeah. in like anything. Yeah. <laughs> It was like a wellness check for Mike Myers, pretty much. Right, you know? exactly. Oh, he's still alive. Okay, he's still good. alive. Okay. The the one that I will mention for myself, though, um, because I loved I loved the original Jurassic Park as a kid. Um, kind of scared the hell out of me too. But I loved the first Jurassic Park movie. Had all the action figures, the dinosaurs, all that stuff. Um, saw the third one in in middle school, which the third one sucks. It is bad. I don't know if you guys yeah. remember Jurassic Park three. No, nope, I, I remember did. that. Yeah. I had it. Yep. Did you really? And yep. I just remember yeah. the, the whole premise, you know, they're on this island trying to find this kid who's lost. And then the last five minutes, the military shows up and rescues everyone and cut to credits. And that's with, it with like Dr. Sadler. Right. Yeah. yeah. She shows up. Yeah. Because she yeah. knew somebody in the, in the Navy or Marines. Yeah. Right. But the, the one I have never seen is I have never seen the lost world ever. Never, never saw the lost really world. I have no, no recollection of what that is about. I know Vince Vaughn's in it or so yeah. I've been yeah. told, but I've never seen it. I don't know if it's worth seeing. Um, yeah, never saw it. So, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to say something controversial Uh-oh. right here. Don't don't say I, it. I I think the Lost World is Stop. my favorite Jurassic Stop. Park. Really? Oh my god! I think get it out. is. I get out. I I'm done. Really, I'm done. I really love that movie. Doctor Doctor oh, Ian Malcolm Vinny's is the gone. only is he the only returning cast member from that movie? Doctor uh, Malcolm? No, and. Uh, John Hammond. Yeah. Is, oh, yeah. John Hammond's in it too. Really? Yeah. And that okay. might be that might be that might be a nostalgia thing since it was my first Jurassic Park film. That might be it. Yeah. I saw that before the original one. And you just I, love Jeff Goldblum. I love Jeff Goldblum. Yes, I, I do. I think, we, oh, I think we all much. do. <laughs> I love Jeff Goldblum, but I was watching while I was running on the treadmill the other day uh, some old interview from a few years ago when he was on Conan. Do you think that whole the Jeff Goldblum like act is it an act or you think that's really how he is? I think it's how he the is. The whole like, well, uh, you know what? Uh, 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 it that might, really, it might be a little, really, it might be a little, really might be, great. Might impression. be a little done up. Yeah, it might be a little done up. But, I mean, I love uh, him. I love the. I, I love him as an far. actor. So. I will say this too: what what makes uh, the Lost World really work for me is also. Uh, do you guys know the actor Peter Postlethwaite? He no. played. Um, he played no. Roland the Hunter. Like the crazy T Rex hunter in the oh, Lost world, clever girl. A, yeah. No, not, not that. Wait, is that no, not that? No, that's no, the guy that gets in the first that, one, right? That's yeah. the Velociraptor guy. Yeah, he was he was really good in that movie too. So okay, and okay. that's not knocking the first one because I love the first one, obviously, but uh, I really really enjoy the second one. So, and I'm I know that's the unpopular opinion because yeah. a lot of people, yeah, really, people people prefer the third one over the second one. Many people. Oh God, do, really? So. Oh, oh yeah. but I don't know if it's worth seeing oh, the yeah. second one. Oh boy, oh, yeah. I really love the that second third one. one is bad. <laughs> but but then again, uh, I hated Jurassic World two. I did not like it all. I don't know how you guys felt about that one. I never saw. I just saw yeah. the first World one and I disliked. Yeah, it. yeah. The first one was okay. The second one was awful. I think and, I- yeah. Yeah, I saw I remember seeing the second one. It wasn't re- anything to remember by, No. Um but I, I know the third Jurassic Park there was a lot of callbacks to the Lost World in that. Okay, those um, were one right over my because head. Because they they took place on the same island, so there was yeah. a lot of yeah. a lot of callbacks to that. So I do remember yeah. that. Okay. Um, so Interesting. that's probably why people like 3 
more than more. two. Is they had the callbacks. <laughs> and two didn't take place on the first island, which I'm sure I know I was expecting that Is to that happen. You know, East Lake right. or whatever. Yeah, yeah it was know a that they had a second park island. There. Yeah, he was, was building like, oh, a second okay. park. So that, you know, it's a lot darker jerk. than the first one, I think. Yep. But the um, first one also has yeah. Newman, so I go back. That's forward, true. So. <laughs> or billions Nedry. of dollars to build a dinosaur theme park, and you only got one IT guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> anyway, Dotson. Dotson. Uh, we got Dotson here. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Greg, what about you? Nobody you got another, cares. Mo- another movie or <laughs> another yeah. listener comment? Uh, yeah, I'll get some. Uh, I'll I'll go with uh my our friend Jack Lugo here. Gone with the wind. Never saw it. Never, never saw that either. Never saw it, it either. Um, I know it's a classic. Who cares? <laughs> uh, Sean also said uh, never saw a Fight Club. I saw it, but I might as well have not seen it. You know, because I just yeah. don't. That's like one of those movies that I saw but didn't pay attention to. I I saw it once and I saw like the FX edited version, so I didn't get the full deal. Oh yeah. But um the ending, which I know Sean mentions he had the end he had the ending spoiled and it ruined it for him. That ending, like to in like high school when I saw that movie, that blew my mind. I don't know about you guys, but absolutely blew my mind. Well, let me see. Oh, go ahead, Vinny. I was gonna say I saw bits and pieces of that. I don't and meatloaf is in it (laughs) why meatloaf is in that movie i still don't understand but i yep don't remember that at all but like i said i saw bits and pieces there you go yeah meatloaf is meatloaf is underrated by the way the the food i mean so oh well i would say he'll do anything for love but not that all right (laughs) yeah meatloaf is great (laughs) the food um stick it on the picture because the ending spoiled for you i mean this movie i never saw anyway and then you know heard about you know the ending obviously but i never saw the sixth sense oh oh okay uh, neither have i so neither oh, have look I. at justin look, did, wow it's like did we I, grew watching the same movies i, I told know. you guys right? the story though about how i are you guys that. the same person we might we be. might be yeah <laughs> Ooh, did, I, did I tell you guys i told you guys the story of how i spoiled that for my family no no, no i didn't tell this. please tell all right, so uh, this would have been 97, 98, I don't know. I just remember being in fourth or fifth grade, went over to my buddy's house to play some PlayStation, and he goes, did you see this new Sixth Sense movie? And of course, I said no, because it was a scary movie. I don't want to see scary movies. <laughs> uh, and so he put it on, and I'm like, well, I don't I don't want to watch this. And it was the very beginning where... Um, the the very beginning where he Bruce Willis is talking to a patient and the patient's got a gun and then it it like you know flashes forward or whatever and I'm like you know what? yeah turn this off I want to play PlayStation he goes ah oh, it's fine he goes he's dead the whole time anyway it's no big deal it, you know that's the whole point of the movie Bruce Willis is dead he died there <laughs> and then the whole time you don't know he's dead so I go home that night and lo and behold my parents rented the Sixth Sense from Hollywood Video or Blockbuster one of the two <laughs> and they just start watching it. And I go, oh, yeah, uh, my, I go, John saw that. He told me, he goes, you know, Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. They literally <laughs> just started the movie. My dad oh, my gave God. Me, I swear to God, I remember my dad gave this look to me like, what the fuck? Like, he, he didn't say that because I was in fifth grade. Yeah. But I know he was thinking it. Yeah. Totally ruined the entire movie for him. So, yeah. So that movie has no, like, rewatchability. No, it? it's a I mean, one and done. Like it's a one and done. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it just doesn't or, have the or, same effect. Or you watch it the second time knowing it is, and then you're like, oh, yeah, you that look makes for that. Sense. Oh, okay. that show it, yeah. Yeah. it a little more. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. So, okay. I, Justin, you and my mom are two peas in the pod. Aren't yeah, you? we like to spoil things for people. Yeah. I apologize <laughs> in advance if there's anybody listening who's like, I was just going to watch that movie this week, and you've waited, uh, what did that be, like 24, 23, yeah. 25 years I was like, now? To, to be fair, these movies do have some life to them. So, yes. I mean, you yes. have, we didn't do a spoiler warning, but, you know, it's not like these movies are anything recent, I suppose. No, so no. We're not. So, we're we're a, sorry, but we're not. That's a good one, Greg. Yeah. That's that had yeah. the whole M. Night Shyamalan twist. That's what kicked it all yeah. off for him, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, never, never seen it. Maybe I... Yeah, probably won't probably, now. Probably, probably no won't. need to see it. No, I probably won't. Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Good job, Vinny, Vinny, what about you? Um, I don't know. I have a hard time thinking of this because I've seen a lot of movies and then it's like, oh, what's a what's a popular movie? Um, but I know <laughs> one that's on the list just from uh Seinfeld. Um I've never seen it, but I might make out during it. Uh, Schindler's List. I've never seen that movie. Vinny, I, have right. that on, I have that on my list, too. <laughs> Do you? I, I've never seen it. I, it's a big popular movie. It is. Um, it's you know, it's got, 
Voldemort yeah. in it. Um, Liam Neeson's in it. Ben Kingsley. You know, a lot of big names. Yeah, I've never seen it. Um, I know that there's a lot of you know. It's a really good movie. From yes. what Pizzo said, I'm not avoiding watching it. It just. I don't, yeah, I, 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 I think I, the, I don't have a, like an aspiration to sit down like and yeah. really watch the movie. So with a movie like that, you have to be in a certain frame of mind. I think like you can't yeah. just go in like, Hey, it's Friday night. I grabbed a pizza. Let's watch Sindler's list. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Don't expect, you know, to no, be and, comfortable and like fulfilled. Or no. Anything. Yeah. Um, it's that's depressed. It's one that I've always been curious about and wanting to see just because I, I love, you know, learning about world war two history and, and, the learning about the Holocaust and the horrible things that went on. And like, I remember we used to go on field trips with our students to the Holocaust museum in Skokie on the North side. And yep. like, it's so interesting and there's so much information to take in. Obviously it's very depressing, but um, yeah, like I just, I, to sit down and be like, all right, I'm going to watch a three hour movie. And I know when I'm done, I'm going to be pretty depressed because of how shitty human beings can be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you really got to yep. be psyching yourself up for that. So but yeah, that's one that's one that I have not seen. And the fact that in the Seinfeld episode, it's Jerry making out with his girlfriend in yes. the movie theater. Um, and I think that brought it like Newman? a whole new popularity. Newman, yeah, Newman, so, yeah. Newman lets his parents know. Right. And that's how they. Oh, out. yeah. Yes. They get really yeah, mad at so them. Yeah. good. So good. With the uh, Schindler, yeah. with Schindler's list, I actually saw it in eighth grade because wow. you know, we were, we oh, were wow. learning it in the we were learning about the Holocaust and social studies. And there was obviously a special permission slip mm -hmm. that had to be signed. So got it signed because I didn't want to go to class because you had to sit in like a study hall. If you didn't go see it, I was like, well, I'm not doing that. Not doing that. Yeah. See a movie. Yeah. So I saw that. I also saw the movie. I don't know if you guys know the movie Life is Beautiful. Um, that's also bit. another Holocaust movie that is also very good, um, but another very sad movie. And yeah, so I saw it. Then I don't think I've seen it since to be uh, mm. to be. I know Ashley really likes that movie. I don't know what this is a movie you really like. I mean, it's well done but it's like yeah, it's like, yeah you can appreciate you can appreciate yeah, it appreciate it but yeah. i like it i'm like no i like when i want ralph fines i want to see him as you know ever <sighs> the english like patient or voldemort so i actually have seen that movie <laughs> have you really and it, have it, you it, it, i have it not does, seen that one it, do, it, do, it does suck so i'm, I'm with a <laughs> so lady got one. that one right yeah. too no lady, yeah they definitely got that i mean it is some romantic bullshit it's just not my thing so i do feel like elaine uh, in the movie theater next to Peterman, where she physically cannot contain herself. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I got I got two here. I'm going to throw at you because when I think of these two movies, they kind of go hand in hand. I don't know if they, they, I don't know similar themes and and like the overarching theme. I guess is similar, very different movies. I would imagine. And those two are they're both sci-fi movies. The first one is Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yep, number two. And a space uh, 2001, a Space Odyssey. Never saw Which I know I know that one. I think there's some Star Wars ties there, right? Like some of the insides of the ship. I think they kind of maybe pulled from that. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but there was um that was kind of like the big Stanley Kubrick blockbuster. Right? Yeah, that's actually a really good. That's a movie you have to watch like a couple times to get through all the themes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's Kubrick, so you know there's meaning behind every yeah. freaking mm -hmm. shot. It's really good. It's a good oh, movie. Maybe it's, I'll, on HBO, it? it's on HBO Max. Is it really? Right, maybe watch. I'll give yeah. that a watch this weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, and I think there's a lot of there's a, sorry, there's a lot of cultural references too. It's like, oh, that's where it came from. You I'm know? sure there's a lot of Simpsons episodes that are going to be funnier to me when oh, I see that. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> it tends to be how so, they do their, do their doubt. work. And yeah. I, I want to say Close Encounters has Richard Dreyfus in it, which I'm always down yes. for some Richard Dreyfus. So, yeah, um, yeah uh, a couple more. Uh, Mike your cousin Vinny and also Mark, your cousin both wrote in and said they have never seen the matrix, which really okay. bummed me out um, because I love the first matrix. The second one yep. matrix reloaded is okay. Matrix revolutions. And it's not worth watching, yeah. but that first yeah. one is so exciting. It's so good. I know we've talked oh, about yeah. that on other podcasts, yep. but um, yeah. And Mike also said he's never seen any of the James Bond movies. Ooh, Same Mike. thing with my wife. Uh, who also said, "Sorry, Greg, I've never seen James Bond." So you've you've seen at least one, Jesse. You've seen I saw Goldeneye. Eye, so I feel like bits and pieces of other movies. You played yeah. Golden yeah. Eye. <laughs> I, got the, I, I played Tomorrow Never Dies. I got the story for that. The world is not enough. I, I think I couldn't beat the first level in that, so I I didn't get that one. <laughs> yeah. The bank episode. The yes. or the bank level. The bank level. Yeah, the yeah, bank I got level, so frustrated yeah. in that. The opening um, to the movie. <laughs> 
Greg, you got any more you want to, or do you want to go with uh, a listener write in on this one? I'll go, I'll go um, uh, Lizzie McWriter on Twitter. I haven't seen most of the Harry Potter movies. What do you think about that one, Vinny? I mean, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big Harry Potter everybody. You're, oh, yeah. you're a big I Harry mean, Potter guy, but you, but you, you're a big. The fan books are better books, than movies, so, so. yeah, yeah. You're, um, you're on that. I've seen, I've seen them all, but I don't like all of them. I, I only really, to yeah. be honest, I really only like one through four, if I'm perfectly honest. And I thought the Half Blood Prince was okay is, is half yeah. blood oh no half blood no Prince. that's just that's just a person that's just a point of view from someone who's never read the books yeah so. yeah so i had i had this on my list too i've only seen the first one is sorcerer's stone i've seen that yep. one and i could take or leave it it didn't really do much for me but i really liked um is it goblet Came, of fire that's the fourth one which, yeah, which yeah, the, the one though one. with his his uncle that's a werewolf or whatever oh no. serious blood that's uh which one three. is that Wait, that's three. The okay. one with the werewolf and the dog. Yes, I yeah. I saw that three. one. I really liked that one. That one Prisoner I really of liked. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's it. And then I also saw part one of the last one, and I was like, eh, whatever. Okay, that's yeah. fine. But um, yeah, the, I've never yeah, seen the, any of the other ones. The last two movies are really. I mean, the books. The book was really long, and they just had to you know they make it into two. Do all the details in the movie. Um, but yeah, I would say one. The movie isn't good unless you've read the books. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saw the first one when it first came out. I was young. I'd read the books and I thought it was a great, you know, adaption of the book into movie. I thought they nailed a lot of the characters. So it was kind of like seeing the book come to life uh, for me as a kid. So I, I really liked the first one. So it has that nostalgia factor for me. But I can see people not, you know, you not liking the first one. Depending yeah, on how you yeah, saw it, you know, it, 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 you know, a kid's movie, you know, the first, yeah. you know, the first two movies are really kid, kiddish kid focused. Um, yeah. The third one, they kind of like evolve and it's more of a, a you know, a teen movie, you know, it kind of progresses with them in age. It was, yeah, it was also the first with a different director because Alfonso yep. Caron directed that one who also directed uh, Birdman, which uh, was brought oh, up wow. earlier, which he won the yeah. Oscar for. But yeah, that was completely, uh, completely kind of like that that i mean that had a different like lens filter yeah, I, on the camera almost that lens filter really and then great. outside you know the grounds were completely different it was different yeah uh, it was all different two. yeah yeah yep. you're, so, you're absolutely right yep um hmm. yep. yeah it was yeah so yeah th- three is kind of when it kind of got to be more not as kid anymore yeah you know, for, for yeah. adults and older kids or you yeah. know, young adults well it was like anymore. growing up it was kind of growing up as, as the kids were growing up yeah that's when they really that's why I think when you really could feel, I mean, they, if you, if you listen to Daniel Radcliffe's voice, I mean, in the yeah. first one, he, there's, <laughs> there are scenes throughout the movie where he's like high pitch and then yep. low pitch and then back to high. You could tell kind of mm-hmm. which scenes were shot. Those reshoots order, were so. killer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah, I saw all of them and only really liked, uh, like a handful, I suppose, but okay. I've, I've, I, I don't really rewatch any of them. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I I mean, um, Vinny, what about you? You got another one? Yeah, I guess um, seeing um, my mom's on here, Lynn, uh, she, I'll just read hers. First she's, I, th- I think, I think she's the winner of this. this. I know she, man, <laughs> she's really missed out on yeah. good stuff. Uh, she has not seen Goodwill Hunting. I've oh, actually great seen movie. that one. Love that movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, she loves Robin Williams comedies and not him and uh, doesn't really like his dramas. Um, although, yeah, I, yeah, whatever. Um, uh, she hasn't seen Patton because she never saw that either. Movies. Um, I've seen, I've seen that, but I was young. Um, yeah, just because my dad really likes that movie. Um, The Godfather. Um, never, never saw that either. Watched. You've never like, seen that one. That's one for you. I know you the, haven't seen that. The one, only, Justin. the Jeez. only Godfather I've seen part of is Godfather Part Three, and I've heard that's the worst of the three. Yeah. So yeah. I've only What's saw part problem? of that. <laughs> Shame on you. We're going to get yeah. shamed for that one. Do we have enough time, Vinny, where I can list all these problems? I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I guess. I mean, I, I would like, I, I'm all about a, a good crime drama. I loved The Irishman, you know, so I think I would like it. Oh, yeah. You um, love, uh, yeah. You love yeah. So, and I, I did it like, long, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. That's what I've heard. So she's also never seen, I know she has the shining, but I know she's seen that because I've watched that with her. So she didn't <laughs> fully grasp what we were trying to accomplish here today. She did a better <laughs> job than my father, um, which maybe we'll get to at the end of this segment. 
<laughs> um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. She hasn't seen any of the Rocky movies and wow. the Lord of the Rings. Wow. Um, so, yeah. And I have to say, I I haven't really seen any of the uh, Indiana Jones movies outside of the second one. Um, oh, the really? First, one and one, three. Two and three. I think I've, yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of one three and four, but I have not like sat down and watched a good portion of that. I know Mm -hmm. bits and pieces of the, (laughs) the movies, but I don't, I've, yeah, I've definitely won it. Yeah. I've not seen, but yeah, I, I, two was what, uh, what was that one? Temple Uh, of doom. Temple Temple of doom. That's my favorite one. one. Yeah. That was, that was a good one. Um, but yeah, I've, I can't, four, those four are ones I can say. Skip. No, yeah. pretend four didn't yeah. happen. Yeah, four I, although I, I've exist. probably seen, probably out of the one, three, and four, I've probably seen the most screen time of four, unfortunately, because I think it was on TV. Yeah. And it was yeah, on the all. background and <laughs> yeah. type of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sharp Picturing on Twitter also said Goodwill Hunting as well, which yeah, man, I, 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 l- okay. I love that movie. Um, it's not one I'm going to seek out to watch, but it's one of those. If it's on TV and there's nothing on, I'll definitely put that on. Um, who else? Let's see. We got uh, Lisa also mentioned The Godfather and so did Jennifer. Lisa also mentioned that she's never seen the Titanic, um, wow. which I'll be honest. I think I saw the Titanic movie once. Um, and once I got the uh, the realization that this was going to be more of a love story, I was like, yeah, I'm out. I bounced on that. That's so, what um, kills the movie for me. Yeah. Because Which, some of those some of those scenes are like amazing. The um like the Jack and Rose stuff. I mean, that stuff is just bullshit to me. Paint me yeah. like one of your French girls. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could make Great an impression for Justin. that scene. But. <laughs> best kate winslet we've heard on this podcast yes um yes. the scene but i mean i i justin i was talking to you before the show about how i yeah. thought night to remember and i thought mm-hmm. i mean james cameron that that movie's like from the what 50s i think or the late 50s and james cameron copied a bunch of shots from that movie like i mean he copied the exact same like camera angles and stuff like that but i would have much rather seen like a like a, a readaptation of that with more of like the politics involved sure and, you know the ship that was nearby that was ignoring the rockets and stuff mm-hmm. like that and the distress signals i mean stuff like that is just fascinating and then um the end of titanic which was really well done is when they return uh, when the lifeboat returns to uh, to see all the bodies left in mm-hmm. the water, that's some of the yeah. most haunting shit I've ever seen. Yeah, so. that's dark. Yeah, um, I I just I remember when that movie came out, it was like Titanic fever. I remember like CBS oh, made yeah. like a yeah, I think it was CBS. They made like a, a TV Titanic movie. I want to say like yeah. um, uh, what's his name um from Rocky Horror Picture Show was in it. I could be wrong. Um. Tim Curry. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I, really? I kept I kept thinking Curry. I couldn't remember his first name. I want to say Tim <laughs> Curry was in it. Um, but yeah, I, me- I remember being all in. Like I remember in grade school, what like third or fourth grade, we did a lesson on that's what we learned about it. Yeah. And it was so yeah. you know fascinating. But then yeah. I remember when it came out, uh, I remember everybody in my sixth grade class. I think it would I think I was in sixth grade or fifth grade. Um, and I just remember the girls in the class, they went and saw that movie multiple times. Yeah. And then I don't know if you guys remember when you, when it finally came to VHS for rental, it was two VHS two tapes because it was so tapes. long. Yep. yep. And uh, no, thanks. I, I was good with that. But uh, yeah, um, there, there are parts of it that are really good. But the like I said, the love stories like I could so do without that. And then yep. just kind of stick with like a historic more of like a historical type of movie, you mm-hmm. know, something like that. Yep. But uh per them that's just me personally. But. Yeah. But it, if you if you want to see that, I think what was it? A night to remember. Yeah, that's the one I do. Yeah. Yep. That's the oh, one did I you just up. say yeah. that? I, I, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I was no, uh, okay. pulling up pulling up messages from Pretzel Vince and I just wanted to Oh yeah. Uh, we gotta get <laughs> ready for that worry. segment. Wait, did you did have you seen that movie, Vinny? A, a, a night, night to rem- remember. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I actually really like that one. It's really than... good. It's yep. really good. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll really have to give well that a look. Done. I'll have yeah. to see if I can find yeah. that. It was somewhere. nineteen. It was nineteen fifty eight, and it's uh, it's a very it's a very British movie, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really well done. We're yeah, like uh, seeing something like that. Um, I'll go, I'll run through a few more, uh, and then we can go around one more time if you guys want. Uh, Karen wrote in. She said she's never seen Forrest Gump. I remember I saw that movie uh, at a pretty young age and, and liked it, but um, it, it's not it's not necessarily. I mean, it's got its uplifting moments, but it's also got its really dark, depressing moments oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. 
for yeah. sure. And as a Absolutely. kid, I didn't really get it. And then once you see it again, as more as an adult, it's like, oh man, you know, he he's <laughs> he's had a pretty okay life, but the people around him, who they went through some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, so th- there's one. Uh, Christine wrote in said she's never seen the Karate Kid. I will admit I've never seen any of the Karate Kid movies. Um, okay. I've I know the whole, I know either. the whole wax really? on wax okay. off thing. Uh, Erica also said she's never seen any of the Mission Impossible movies, which I've only Ooh, seen like none? one in five, maybe. Um, never saw Godfather or Top Gun, which was kind of surprising. Top Gun I saw when I was young, and it didn't really do anything for Ooh. me. It was just like, eh. <laughs> Top Gun is like another one of those movies that it's like it might as well be here because I've seen it, but it's like I don't. Yeah, care, and, and that's know? that's my dad still will ask me like on a. Oh, he's the basis. big Top Gun guy. He's yeah. like, hey, is that new Top Gun movie out yet? I'm like, no. <laughs> so, Dad, if you're listening, it is still not out. You don't. We don't, oh, we don't have to have that conversation this week. Uh, Samantha also wrote in and said, she, "Your cousin Samantha Vinny, uh, she has never seen any Batman movie, which literally my head exploded." Wow, yeah. um, like, but how didn't Samantha. she see any of the, the the new trilogy? Yeah, I don't know. The, I can't say new trilogy. The Christopher I guess Nolan stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, yeah. That I mean, that Dark was on Knight TV too. Is on, it's on every month. <laughs> every Dark week, Knight's yeah. on a lot. So. Yeah. Uh, Bruce also said, I've not seen Casablanca or Gone with the Wind. I will have not seen those either are, of those them. Those are two movies. You know, here's I have seen kid. Casablanca. I've not seen those. Oh, have you I really owned really? that movie? Is it good? Oh, do you? It's, it's a... not bad. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of a love story, but it's also got a little bit of um, some mystique to it because I think there, there's like a, you know, somebody's a spy. It's during World War II. So there's, okay. um, you know, the Nazis are there looking for a spy. And mm-hmm. so there's that. And I think I remember the movie had a f- kind of a funny, humorous ending the way it ended. So it wasn't it wasn't actually that bad. I know I had a good chuckle out of it um, at the end. I was like, oh, that actually was kind of a good movie. I didn't think it was going to be that good, but okay. um, <laughs> as good as it was. But, yeah, it was it was pretty good. Uh, last, last one that we have written in, and then we can go around one more time and then we'll get to pretzel Vince's uh, comments for you, Vinny. Uh, <laughs> Melissa wrote in, she said, she's never seen Hocus Pocus until like five years ago. I will admit, I never, that was I, me too. I, have, yep. I have still never seen Hocus Pocus, uh, and wow. it kills my wife every Halloween. Uh, she said prior to not, it's not scary, to, Justin. No, I just, I have no it's Halloween. I don't, Halloween does nothing for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it scares you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Prior to seeing Hocus Pocus, people would literally gasp at me like I killed an animal in front of them. Well, I finally saw it most of it. And I still don't get why so many people responded that way. It wasn't as amazing as everyone made it out to be based on their reaction. I think Melissa's re- reaction there, I think, is the same way I feel about Goonies. Um, I didn't see Goonies until like three or four years ago. And it's good. Don't get me wrong. But I didn't see it as a kid. So I don't think yeah. I have that attraction or that... Um, yeah, that, like nostalgia. nostalgia vibe for it, like right. I do with like yep. Mighty Ducks or Ferris Bueller yep. or something like that. So no, I agree with you there. The Goonies doesn't do anything for me. You no, know, I mean if it's on, I'll watch it, and I'm I'm happy to yell, "Hey, you guys!" You know, and do all that. <laughs> yeah. that, that was a little bit better, right? That good was slop? that was a pretty good okay. slot. Yeah, um, <laughs> better than you. your Kate Winslet. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, my last few, and then and then Greg and Vinny, you go. Um, Dances with Wolves. I've never seen. Uh, oh, okay. I've Exorcist. seen the last samurai, which is pretty much it's based. With- it's yeah, similar to that, right? That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Exorcist, I have never seen, nor I can guarantee oh! you, I will never see that movie. Um, <laughs> good, good for you. It's good for oh, me. It's yeah. So good. No, so I don't. Good, you'll poop Justin. your pants. Yeah. Oh, I, sure, I certainly <laughs> would. Um, Citizen Kane, I've never seen Citizen Kane. Yeah, nope, I, I was going to bring that up. Yep. That's like a classic. And then my last two, Apocalypse Now. I know we mentioned that earlier. I've never Ooh. seen Apocalypse oh, Now. That's good. good. Movie. Um, and then the other one, going back to my love for DC, uh, I have not seen most Marvel movies. I've seen the big ones. You know, I love Spider-Man movies. I've seen the Avengers and Endgame and all that. And I saw a couple of I saw both Guardians of the Galaxies movie, Galaxy movies and a couple of Captain America's. But that's it. Um, haven't seen Black Panther. Haven't seen the third Iron Man. Haven't seen. Um, I love the third Iron Man. Is it good? Yeah, no, it's, it's good. Not, I know a lot of people are like, eh. It's mm-hmm. not and not as yeah, good. It was a good um, movie. But it's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. It's, a good, I, it's a really good the movie. The one that I actively do want to see is Thor Ragnarok because I've heard that's a pretty cool. That's movie. very good. Yes. So I, yeah, I do want to really, see that really one. Well done. Yeah, yeah that was so, a lot of fun. Greg, what about you to wrap up? What's some some last ones you haven't seen? I, I was going to bring up Citizen Kane, and I know that's like treasured American. It's like cinema, yeah, like uh, right there. 
Yeah. I, I don't, don't even know what I want to see that. No, I, I, I don't know, know what it's about either. I don't know what it's about. Isn't it about a newspaper? Hold on. We're going to look this up. The, the uh, power of. Uh, I remember uh, the scene in The Simpsons when they're at like the Hard Rock Cafe or whatever. And they go, oh, here's the cane from Citizen Kane or something <laughs> like that. Like, wait, there wasn't a cane in that movie. It so. says here this quasi biographical film examines the life and legacy of Charles Foster Kane, a uh, composer character played. Based on the American media baron, William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer, Chicago oh, Tycoon, okay. Samuel Insel and Harold McCormick, as well as aspects of the screenwriter's own lives upon its release. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just about about his life, about this made up character's life, I guess. So I, d- I just know Seinfeld's their homage to that was the Bosco. Oh, really? Oh, because see that at I the end of the movie, know. the end of the movie, they say the guy. I don't know who, but I I just know the end of the movie. The guy says Rosebud. I don't know oh. what it's supposed to mean. Oh, but he that's... says Rosebud, and then yeah, she says Bosco. Peter Peterman's mom says Bosco. Bosco, the same yeah. way that guy says R- Rosebud. I don't know Rosebud. if he. Dies I want to the say there's the a Rosebud mentioned in The Simpsons too somewhere. Yeah, there I'm sure is. There probably there's a is. reference. Yeah. There. So good call. But, yeah. So that that was uh, Seinfeld's homage to. to Have you Citizen seen it, Vinny? Citizen Kane? Yeah. No. I just know the Rosebud thing. I just know the Rosebud thing. I don't have any desire to see that. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I just. Garbage. I know people just say it's, oh, yeah, it's amazing. It's a must see. I'm like, like yeah. yeah. People mm. people can write in and tell us why we need Please to. Please do. See it. Yeah. yeah. I've heard it's like a I know there's there's yeah it's like I've heard it's like a marvel of modern cinema or like the the beginnings of modern cinema or something like that. So. Maybe we can do a okay. what is it uh science fiction theater three thousand or whatever. Ooh, with I love that. <laughs> oh, I love we, we could do theater. that and uh, <laughs> we can make fun of it as it's going. I think you might be onto something, Benny. <laughs> yeah, there I, you go. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Very cool. Um, um, got any others? The, yeah, the last one I had. I'm, oh, just, yeah. I'm going with a kind of a classic Disney animation movie here. I've never seen the Jungle Book. I don't so, think I, I have either. either. Okay, I was like, I don't know if I'm missing anything with that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen most of them, but yeah, I've never seen that one. That one popped in my head for yeah. whatever reason, so I probably okay. never will see it. I know they did like a live action, yeah, something. That's right, I probably yeah. never watched that one either. So yeah, yeah I don't, don't really care about you know, Jungle Can Go to Hell. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Vinny, what about you to wrap wrap up the segment here? Um, I have not seen, um, well, Greg's seen more of it than me, but I have not seen any of the justice league. Um, <laughs> I have, I have Are not we talking seen justice any league of or, or, or Zack Snyder's uh, justice league. I have not seen any of the, justice league. <laughs> um, I have not seen any of those. It's um, all bad. No, it's I've not, not seen any of the, um, uh, what's it? Uh, Suicide Squad. Didn't see any. Yeah, of that. you're not missing um, much there. Batman versus Superman. I've seen bits and pieces. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I know the bad. most of the Justin. It's terrible. It's not good. It's not good. That's no, probably... it's terrible, Justin. That's say probably it. the second most. I want to uh... hear you say it, Justin. <laughs> it's, it's not good. <laughs> he won't. It's he not won't. good. I don't know if I'd say terrible though. Um, I have not. That's probably the second most DC. Uh, I've, the only one I've okay. actually watched front of uh, end is the first Wonder Woman. I haven't seen the second Wonder See, Woman. I have not seen either one of those. I need to. I've been meaning to. The, the first one's really good. Um, that's what I've heard. Only, I know they're making a third one, one now like. too. And I've not seen any of the Superman movies. I have not outside either. of the Superman versus Batman. But Man, Man of Steel. No, it wasn't. Good. I haven't even seen. <laughs> I haven't even seen any of the Christopher Reeve Batman. Batman. Nope. Christopher Reeve Supermans. I've never saw any of those either. Yeah. Oh, those. Those are. I mean, those are what you expect. Isn't Gene Hackman General Zod? No, he's like... uh, Lex Luthor. Oh, Lex yeah. Luthor. Okay. Terrence Stamp is uh, General Zod. Okay. I don't Richard, like Richard Superman. Pryor was a villain in one of them too. Really? Yeah. That's right. I remember. <laughs> wow. That. Good for yep. him. Um, yeah, Superman as a character just doesn't do anything for me. Like, just the no, uh, he's lame. He, you can't be. He's indestructible except a little except piece of space kryptonite. rock. Yeah, space rock, and that rock isn't found yeah. on Earth usually, so he's yeah. invincible. What, so what? What from the DC? Like what? What is your top movie from the DC EU, Justin? Me? Yeah. Are we talking? Wait, extended universe? I, I, I extended any, universe, like the DC? recent one, like the Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot movie. Um, I would say the the best DC movie from the recent would be the um. The Emancipation of Harley Quinn and the Fantabulous. Okay, the Birds the, of Prey. Birds yeah. of Prey. That okay. I, and I know you guys. I know my DC fandom is pretty high at points, but that's actually a decent movie. That's actually Erica that, really liked that movie. So okay. okay. 
I if she likes it, you know it can't be that bad. I don't so. even like Harley. Yeah. Qu- I don't even like uh, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. No, I don't. I don't Just, buy no. it. No, really. Maybe yeah. I have to check that movie out. And I know it has Ewan McGregor in it. Ewan McGregor is awesome in that movie, and I really Rosie Perez was pretty good in that movie. Okay. Um, and I can't remember who plays Canary Black Canary. She did a good job. Um, is is Canary Black Canary as well? So, so yeah, okay. there you go. Uh, yeah, Vinny, do you want to talk about? Our final thing here. Yeah, yeah, I had one more movie, oh, yeah, American Graffiti. You oh, guys never, see that? That, that is a no. great movie. That is, is it a directed great by George movie. Lucas. Yeah, before really? Star Wars. Yep. Yeah. Richard yeah. Dreyfus, Ron Howard. Um, yep. A lot. Of Harrison, very young Harrison Ford. I'll have to as check a that out. I always, I always get that and a Clockwork Orange mixed up. I've never seen oh, either one. Oh, they're very different. <laughs> 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 oh, are they? Holy okay. cow. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Clockwork yeah. Orange is a, that's a very awful movie. That's like okay. A- Never seen either one. Horror, yeah, it's thriller. Disturbing. Yeah. All right, well, we'll stick with American Graffiti on that one. Then. Yeah. Although Amer- the, American Graffiti is really good. Okay. The the gang from Clockwork Orange does show up in sp- the new space. Yeah, movie. which <laughs> makes no sense whatsoever. It's like, what are you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did hear about that on several podcasts I listened to. And I'm like, oh, boy. Warner Brothers, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> but uh, all right, we are going to wrap up. We got, we have, we're going to have some fun at the expense of uh, Greg and mine's father in law and Vinny's dad. Vinny, go ahead. I'll okay, let you take so, this one. I don't want to be the one ripping on him. So, uh, new segment Old Man Yells at Cloud. Uh, Pretzel <laughs> Vince wrote in on the text line, and uh, ju- after Justin posted on uh, Facebook, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just you know the what our topic was, and it was popular movies you've never you never saw or just plain don't get. And his response to that was, "Let me get that out here." It's okay, a, there's guys. A, there's several. Yeah. Okay, guys, movies I don't care to see. So uh, he's already off to uh, <laughs> uh, a great start. One, Shutter Island. He's seen that one. He yes, hated he's it. talked to me about how much he hated yes. that one. Yes. Yes. Two. Any chick flick, okay, Aww. there. Um, and three, you've got males, series. perfect, right? Yeah, okay, Jay Pritchett, we understand you're a man and you don't like chick flicks, so <laughs> yes. Um, and he's and he saw the very first Matrix and he just he didn't see the other two because he didn't like the first one. It's um, so, it's a it's a tough movie to wrap your head around the first time you see it. I'll be the first yes. to admit that. And after I told him that he was wrong in his list, I said he needed to resend a list in that actually made <laughs> sense to our topic. He goes. <laughs> Justin said movies you haven't seen or you didn't understand. And I said, yes, you've seen uh, two of those <laughs> with movies. A, and you, with you a screenshot. <laughs> yes. And you also just told me a genre of movies. That doesn't count. <laughs> you <can't> say that. Because <laughs> I know you've seen chick flicks. So, yes. Um, and then he, uh, let's see here. He, yeah, he he still didn't get it. He sent me in um movies he has seen the you know the matrix uh he he reiter- reiterated that he's seen that one uh the village he saw that one he said was just plain weird don't understand why this was made <laughs> that was okay. an m night Shyamalan. it, it was, was. Shyamalan, yeah. it was yeah. yes. yes and then he said death of a president i don't know what that is i'm no. sure he see it was another movie he saw and didn't understand so um okay. yes i um he he completely botched that entire uh, <laughs> segment. So that's why we had our own segment called uh, Old Man Yells at Cloud because he was wrong in all his entire list. He just didn't <laughs> like any of those movies. So, yes, well, there is that. There you go. Well, thank you, Vinny. I Vin, appreciate that. Vince making up his own rules right here. Yes. Now, hold, hold, right. on, hold on a second, though, because he said he's I don't know if this falls under chick flicks, but he says he enjoys he he's I think he's told me he enjoys holiday Hallmark Channel movies. Oh, those are total uh, chick what? flicks. That so whole, how does, that whole how channel does, is no. chick flicks. Yeah. He told you that? Oh, he man. Did. In, was he drunk? Maybe in confidence. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, man. Here. Greg, never you, tell, you just, never you tell just a blew pod- that for you just never, blasted never this to like about 60 about people that, that right? listen every but, week. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know what that falls under. So Vince, please that, those are chick that. flicks for sure. Why, I mean, why like, do I feel channel like is a chick flick flicks. channel? Why do I feel like when we get all get together for our day after Christmas uh, get together, there's going to be quite a discussion on this episode. He's going to deny it. He's going to okay. deny, deny, I, deny. I could almost, I could almost confirm that he says he enjoys the wholesomeness <laughs> out of it. Oh, I don't know. Wow. 
Uh, I, I think that's I, I don't what, know I what to say to that. <laughs> well, you I turned my world upside I w- down. I wouldn't have brought that up until he said no chick flicks right yeah. there. So I have oh, to. Man. Now that I'm now that I'm a podcaster, I'm also a revealer. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> nothing, you, you nothing, gotta, you nothing, is, nothing is safe. Yeah, nothing he's going to have to start anymore, saying so. off the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which also doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm a podcaster. You don't want me to repeat anything. Just don't talk to me, I guess. Exactly. Oh, that goes for everyone now, I suppose. But, <laughs> That's um, awesome. So, yeah, That's we need awesome. to we need to follow up on this. So, Pretzel Vince, uh, please confirm the love for a Hallmark. Hallmark. A Hallmark, Hallmark, yeah. Hall- Hallmark, Hallmark holiday movies. To be specific, <sighs> so. I don't know what's worse, Hallmark Channel movies or um, Lifetime Channel movies. They're both pretty bad. Ooh. Well, um, I would say <laughs> I think- Hallmark. I would say Hallmark because at least Lifetime, usually it's like a murder. Yeah, there's a little bit of investigation going on. Yeah, Yeah. there's something there. That and I was going to say diversity too, (laughs) at least in in um in a lifetime. So just throw that out there. That's true. (laughs) Because Hallmark is a very specific color if you know yes. what i mean so. <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so same, on, same as the snow yeah. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> <clarify. laughs> on that note uh yeah. real quick don't forget um later this weekend on sunday we will ha- monday sorry isn't it they have a monday night game right Vinny? the bears no it's sunday night Monday night. okay the, yeah. so so sunday be sure to check your podcast feeds for another episode of blast from the past where Vinny will be taking on the bears and the do you want to do you want to tell us or do you want it to be a surprise 2004 game against the jacksonville jaguars Ooh, interesting yeah. all right Ooh, ball. <laughs> mm. so so check that out on sunday that'll go up well uh, Vinny goes through the starting lineups the the box score so to speak goes through the coaching staff and we we take a look at uh, a better time in bears history it's not better that game okay all right fair <laughs> enough. Say, it's not better that it's game not, yeah it's, it's hard to be much worse though that's the thing um, it was so we pretty got, bad we got that coming along <laughs> Um, I just got done today uh, following up with Jake Hahn from Sirius XM NHL. You may, may remember him. He was on our episode with top five sports movies. We're going to have him on again. It's looking like we're either going to do top five sports logos or top five hockey logos or hockey sweaters. We haven't decided yet, but uh, that should be next Thursday if his timeline works out for us. So if you have any questions for him, let us know. We'll, we'll get him to answer those. And then in the future weeks, hopefully in December, we might have the three spot guys on. Um, and I believe that they were going to come on to talk. We were going to do top five sports video games, which was going to be a good one. Yeah. And then we were also in talks with two jocks and a schlub to maybe do a show together as well, which I was listening to their podcast when I took the dog for a walk today. So uh, they're, they're good guys as well. So um, that's it. Greg, you got anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we, uh, we've think nailed we, it all. I think we've covered just about everything. I'm sure there's a bunch more movies on, uh, my list. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. It was very revealing. So, yep. excellent. <laughs> Vinny, any, any other parting words? Yeah, we got the interview on Monday. Oh, yes. Um, that's right. We are. Oh, yes, be- we do. Interviewing former MLS player Perry Morozovich. Um, I used to play soccer with him growing up, and he has agreed to come on our show, and we're going to interview him about his career. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, so he's a really nice guy. Um, chatted with him a couple weeks back about doing the interview, and he was all for it. So um, really yeah. thankful that he's going to come on our show. So. If you if you would have told me we'd get to interview a pro athlete. Um, yeah, Eight, ten months yeah, ago right, or nine right. months ago when we started, I'd be like, "You're Who full knew? of shit. No one's gonna come and talk to us." I hadn't spoken with him for gosh, fifteen years. Wow, and just wow. Message him, and he was really responsive, and yeah, he was really kind about it. So, should be a good interview. So that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. so we'll we'll have that. We'll do that Monday. We'll pro- I'll probably hopefully get that up by Tuesday, if not sooner. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you want to. Get a hold of us for any reason. Look on up our YouTube channel, search baseball, and whatever. You'll find us there. The text line slash voicemail is 1913-808-3278. That number again is 1913-808-FART. Uh, there we go. Uh, our Twitter handle is at baseball and what you can email us at two different places, baseball and whatever at gmail.com or baseball and whatever podcast at bellyupsports.com. You can find our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, Anchor, Spreaker, Podcast Addicts, you name it, it's there. Um, tell your friends, tell your family, we want to grow this thing and make it bigger. And uh, yeah, that's it. So 
on that note, have a great weekend and we will talk to you guys next week. Bye everybody. Take care.